right, we should be, we're already live on Facebook. Hi, Facebook people say, let us know how the audio is if you're on Facebook. I think we're also live on YouTube. Let me double check. Where's my headset? Oh, where is it? Oh, here. How, let us know how the audio is if you're listening to us. Okay. Can you say something? Yeah. So the, everyone sees us now? Are we on yeah. already? Yeah, we are live. We are live on Facebook and on YouTube as well. I see we have okay, Rashad so on YouTube. Okay, so hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Hold on. Let me... please, please let me know if my audio yep. Great. is not very well as well. Perfect. We're live everywhere. Oh, Beach is in the YouTube live chat. You are live. Great. Fantastic. Okay, can you um, introduce yourself and let everybody know what we're talking about? Yes. Yeah, so my name is Yuval Berger. I'm an Israeli uh, living in Australia now, but I've lived in Israel for 37 years. I'm a third generation Israeli Jewish atheist. And the reason I decided uh, this, this whole thing started with five minute video that I put on Atheist Republic video report uh, page. Uh, but then I felt that five minutes were not enough and I actually uh, put a lot of things aside. Uh, and I chose to speak about it because when I went on the web looking at atheist websites and other websites, I, I saw there was a lot of, a great deal of misconception regarding Israel and the role of religion and the Jewish religion in Israel. And a lot of misconception, uh, misconcep misconception about uh, Judaism and what does it mean to be a Jew and an atheist at the same time? So that was that was how things started. Okay, great. So, what are some uh, issues that you have a problem with? What's, what are some misconceptions that we're going to touch on today? I saw you getting okay. a little bit frustrated, especially on Atheist Republic's Facebook page. I think you got frustrated with some of the opinions people have. So well, I'll tell you the first the first <laughs> thing that frustrated me was that your friend Ali thought that it never snows in Israel. It actually snowed in Jerusalem two days ago. Well, so you can tell people, Ali. You know, yeah. I, people think that about Tehran in Iran as well. So one time I posted yeah. a picture of one of the uh, women in Iran holding her, their hijab on a stake as a protest against mandatory hijab. And other people said this is fake because there's snow. Snow, uh, yeah. No, like no, I, I, I got, I, it snows there every winter. I got stuck. We couldn't go to school because sometimes because of all the snow. But go on, yeah. Yeah, so other, other things that I've noticed, people have this view of Israel as, like, uh, as if it's a kind of a, of a Jewish Ayatollah regime. So, you know, you have to, you have to follow their religion. I, once I heard someone saying that uh, you, you have to be circumcised in Israel or that it's illegal to, to mix Mary in Israel, which is a very, very inaccurate. Uh, I think people... Most people perceive Israel as being more religious than what it is, and most people don't get get the term Jewish state wrong they, because they don't make the definition between a Jewish nation and a Jewish religion. Uh, although you and Ali actually, I think, touched that and explained the, the, the difference. So these were the main things that got me involved. Uh, so what I thought, what I, what I thought I'll do is I'll just start with a bit of a timeline of Israel and, and the role of religion in it, and then you can just keep asking me questions about it if right. it's okay. With I'm going to try to uh, challenge you as much as possible. Sometimes it's going to be in my actual real opinion if I'm challenging you, uh, and sometimes it might not be my opinion. I'm just playing devil's advocate just to make sure that we have people, because I've heard a lot of opinions for and against Israel. So I, I hope I could do a fair job at representing uh, as much sides as possible. And I hope people in the live chat, if, the, if you think, uh, if there's anything you want to bring up that I'm not bringing it up, let me know and I'll try to bring it up. I am looking at both the Facebook live chat and the YouTube live chat. Uh, hi, Theo Machi, by the way. <laughs> says, hi, hi, Theo Machi. All right, go on. Yeah, so I'll start, uh, I'll start with the year 1947. Uh, where the area was called the British Mandate of Palestine. And the UN came with, uh, uh, came with the idea that they, might, di they might, might, might divide the country between a Jewish and an Arab state. Uh, now, the Zionists, the Zionists, Zionists are Jews that, uh, that follow the idea of uh, national liberation for the Jewish people, so they perceive Jews as a nation, and they perceive uh, the modern-day modern Israel as the historical homeland of the Jewish people. That's where the Jewish people is connected historically, not necessarily because of a divine promise, but because of history and archaeology. And they wanted the state to, to, come, to come alive. They wanted to have a Jewish state. But 
they needed to have the ultra-Orthodox Jews, and I'll explain in a minute what is ultra-Orthodox Jews, uh, to their side. They couldn't have uh, Jews coming to the UN and say, no, we don't want a state. So they had to come to some kind of a compromise as for what would be the role of religion in this state. It couldn't be a normal se state separating religion and state because then the ultra-Orthodox wouldn't like it. So they, they came to a compromise that is known uh, today in Israel as the status quo. And the status quo, I mentioned before in my five-minute video, only two components. I'm going to mention uh, <clears throat> three now. Status quo has, has three components. The first one is the Sabbath. Second one is uh, personal status, marriage, uh, divorce, etc. And the third one is the kosher, kosher food Wait, uh, in the public sphere. Kosher and what? What was the second one? So we said Sabbath, kosher food, and personal status, marriage, divorce, etc. And those are the things that, what are these three things exactly? Okay, yeah. so these are the main, the main issues where there, a compromise has been reached about how would re the role of religion in the state. Because currently in Israel, the monopoly on personal status is given to the rabbinical institutions. Or if you're a Muslim to a Sharia institution, if you're a Christian to the church, but it's a religious institution that deals with declaring you married or divorced. Hmm. Doesn't sound very uh, secular. It doesn't sound very secular at all. Uh, and then let's say if you're a mixed couple, let's say you want to get married, uh, you know, with someone out of your religion, then you have to go overseas, get married there, come back to Israel and show, show the Ministry of Interior your marriage certificate, and then they will recognize you as married. But, uh, but in Israel, if you want to marry outside of your religion, you can't do it unless the only exception is because a Muslim man can marry a, a Jewish lady or a Christian lady, they can do it in a Sharia court. So a Muslim man can go to a Sharia court in Israel and marry his Jewish lover. But a, a Jew who wants to marry a Muslim woman, they will have to go overseas, get married. Usually they do it in Cyprus and then come back. Can we can we rewind a little bit because you made a claim that this is because uh, this is a Jewish state because of historical claims, not because of religion. Yeah, that's that's not necessarily so. This is a biblical claim that uh, the Jews have over. This is a religious claim that they have over. This oh land. no, there, there no no. There is history apart apart from the Bible telling you things. There is also history that supports it. So you can read the historian called Josephus. But, uh, I mean, if we want to, if we want to go by history, then the then the Iranians could be like, well, then Iraq is ours, um, you know, Afghanistan is ours, um, and you know, then uh, Americans have to leave the United States because that was then theirs. I mean, people move around, and it, it, no, nobody can go back and be like, well, thousands of years ago we were here, so this is ours now. I mean, I don't understand the historical. Uh, argument it's but it seems to me that I mean the the original Zionists were very secular uh, and they uh, were they were they were they were looking for a homeland anywhere um, it depends who one the main the main figure in the main figure in political Zionism was an atheist Theodor Herzog right and his you, main co his main concern was uh, he was actually at the beginning he wasn't a Zionist he was just a a Jew who wanted to assimilate in his society, right. and then, and he was a reporter in a, in an Austrian newspaper, and he went to cover uh, the Dreyfus trial. I don't know if you heard of it, but uh, Dreyfus, Alfred Dreyfus, was a Jewish officer in the French army that was falsely accused in treason, and Theodor Herzl, Herzl went to cover that, and he saw the crowds the, not shouting death to the traitor, but rather shouting death to the Jew. And then he said, OK, yeah. we have this guy here. He tried to do his best to assimilate. It didn't help him. Then we must find a place where Jews will be the majority and they will have a country of their own. That was his idea. So when he was yeah. offered any land, he thought it was a good idea. It was any right. piece of land that Jews can come and, and have, have their country. So he that didn't, the idea. original Zionist, the original Zionist movement didn't give a shit where they Get, where did Jews go? Well, no, just, Herzl, he, Herzl, no, Herzl was only one person. There were other Zionists. But he's, a, he's a, but he's where he started. That's where he started. That's where it all started. Yeah, but he uh, he wasn't the first, but he was the most effective and prominent one. There were other there were other Jews that thought about coming to going back to a uh, modern day Israel. Herzl was the one that managed okay. to consolidate it to an effective political movement. But Herzl himself. Uh, but, but do you agree the, that? Idea. But do you agree that originally 
people didn't care or like the origin the first movement they just realized that it seems like wherever jews are they're always oppressed they're always discriminated against they can't it doesn't seem like they ex especially at that time i mean still today but even way worse at that time there's nowhere that they could be accepted as part of the society so they were like okay fuck it we just need to have a place for our own and they were gonna they would be they would have been happy with anywhere but the only reason, the only reason why they picked Israel uh, was because of religion. Like, no. uh, that's the main that reason why, that's the main reason why. Obviously, because, huh. hmm. obviously, the religious ones, that was the reason for them. Hmm. Uh, but I will let, when we touch the ultra-Orthodox, I'll explain to you that they actually oppose Zionism on religious grounds. So in their case, religion was the reason why not to have a state. But... Uh, hmm. Yeah, yeah, we have, but, but those are a minority. That's we do have that, but that's not that big. Okay, yeah. but but yeah. the Jews, the uh, the reason Jews wanted to come back to modern day Israel mm. was not only even Jews that didn't believe in the religion at all acknowledge historically that 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 was where Jews came from. How does that argument uh, work, though? Like, do everybody does everybody has a claim over the land that their ancestors thousands of years come from? I mean, my uh, answers, I, I, my ans I, are, I mean, everyone's ancestors at some point came from Africa. I guess we could all go, like, take Africa. Well, back. I guess, I, well, I'll put it this way. You can then argue whether the claim is justified or not. Right. But, but the, the nature of the argument will no longer be a religious one. Okay. It will be a historical one, an ethnic one. So let's say Iran say now it, says that... Can we say it's both, at least? Sorry? Can we say it's, like, like... Both of these arguments exist, both the religious argument they, they and... Both, they both yeah. exist, okay. Okay. but they, if you talk about people like Ben-Gurion, the first prime minister of Israel, or Theodor Herzl, they, they didn't come and said God gave us this land. They didn't mention God at all in their writings. They, they, didn't care, they, they, they spoke about the land only in historical terms. They didn't, they didn't care about the relig divine promise. Hmm. Uh, I would dare say that the faith first five prime ministers of Israel were either atheists or very secular. Actually, I'm pretty sure. Theo, Theo Mackey is pointing out something very interesting. He's saying, weren't early Zionists just following the trend of nationalism, just like other ethnic groups, such yeah, as yeah. Serbians, Austrians, and Hungary? Very, very, very good, very, very good point. Because this is, a, this is a time where people were just handing out nations yeah. like, like candy, like so, left and right. People were drawing so up reason, borders. I think, <laughs> exactly. I think that's a very, very valid point. I think the... The Zionist movement was very clever in understanding the, the political language of its time. Uh, and that and once because the national language was the language spoken in the geopolitical reality of the time, mm. uh, they they were very effective in defining their goals in those terms. Uh, and they said, okay, so we also have the right for self-determination. We are also a nation. Mm. And uh, and based on us being a nation, uh, we also claim to go back to our uh, to our homeland. But the problem, uh, okay. So for example, um, the Kurds weren't very successful. The Kurds were at that time also were trying to get their own nation, but they weren't yeah. very successful. The, the, uh, a lot of people managed to get like Saudi Arabia was born as a country. Iraq was made up by just drawing up borders. Yeah. Lebanon, Iraq and Saudi Arabia are co different stories completely because Saudi Arabia yeah, is, is just a dynasty. I Iraqi understand. was supposed to be a kind of an na Iraqi nation or something like that. Right, right. But I'm just saying this is this was the time to grab a nation. If you it, it, this was the time to grab a nation. If you if you wanted yes. a nation, but and you had to speak the language if you wanted to grab your nation. You had but, to know how to speak the language. But the unique thing about Israel, unlike all these other people, is was these were people already there. They were like, hey, can we draw borders around us and make this our nation? And uh, and the the people that won the war were like, okay, fine, this is your nation. But but the Jews were like different from everybody else because they yeah. were like somewhere else, and they so were like, the Jews, can, can we can we can we go there and grab a nation? Everybody was actually, already ac yeah, go on. Yeah. So so what what the Jews what the Zionist movement did actually there were always there were always some Jews in the country. There was never a, a point in history where it was completely empty of Jews. But what the Zionist movement started doing, they didn't go right away and claim the, let's have a state here. Uh, they started migrating back to the country, buying property in the country, but, and then, and it, but at a certain point when they saw the time was right, they thought they could use it 
and then claim a, a statehood in, in the country or part of it, because even modern day Israel is not considered part of the historical. Did they um, actually buy Israel. it or they just ca- took, no, no, over, no. To, they, took uh, over until, land that people were absentee? 19, up until 1948, up until, they couldn't do, get it otherwise anyway. Hmm. They didn't have the power, even if they wanted to steal the land, they couldn't because they didn't have the, the, the means. Up until 1948, all the land that Jews had was purchased. Right. After but, after the after the country was established, a lot of a lot of land that was before state owned, so it was uh, trusted by the British man, that now became state owned by the state of Israel. And on top of that, the state of Israel took measures to grab land, uh, not necessarily by acquisition. So they they confiscated it, or they used land of uh, Arabs that fled the country, and they said, okay, they're not here, so we're going to grab this land. But uh, uh, but before 1948, before the country, the state was established, all the land that Jews set on it was land that they bought. How much do you agree that a lot of uh, religion was used to justify gr- the grabbing of lands? The grabbing of lands, like this, uh, is like a, like the religious people had a lot of influence in Israeli politics. And it, different Israel, different parties in the, uh, in Israel is very um, has to you know listen to a lot of religious pa- uh, forces within its own community, and a lot of these religious opinions in Israel have the opinion that this it, these lands are theirs have been given to them by God. It's not a this yeah, is not oh, a yeah, political. No, they're, not, they're not shy. They're not. They're not making a secret of it. The, right. the religious right wing in Israel is uh, is very outspoken about saying that they, this land belongs to us uh, be, uh, because of the religion and because of uh, a right. divine divine promise. Well, I, mean, I mean, we know we know that that's what we all I think know that that's what the religious Jewish religious people think. But what I'm asking is that don't don't these very religious Jewish opinions have a lot of influence on Israeli politics. They have, I would say that that uh, it has growing influence. So, for example, in the uh, 19s, in the early 70s, when the religious religious Jewish settlers, not all settlers in the West Bank, by the way, are religious, but the religious ones, they went to a point called Sebastia and they settled there and they wanted to stay there. And the Israeli Israeli government sent troops, and they didn't even let them settle there. They evacuated them. So at yeah, that time, they didn't have that much that much influence. But they had growing influence. And when and as as their influence grew, obviously they exercised more and more exercised it more and more in their favor, hmm. and managed to build well, more settlements. By the way, I, I just have to comment: hmm. not all settlements in, let's say, in the West Bank. Are on land that was confiscated or taken. A, a lot, of, a lot of the settlements are built on land that was actually bought from its owners. The problem, the problem is that there is a law uh, against selling lands to a Jew. So those who sold couldn't uh, are very cautious saying we sold it because they'll be executed. But I think we're now diverting from religion. So let's go back. Right, right, right. okay. Back uh, there. Uh, I mean, so the se- at, I mean, for the influence of religious, yeah. of religious. Uh, of religion on Israeli politics, unfortunately to me, I think it's unfortunate, it has a growing influence on Israeli politics right now. Uh, including including uh, issues that concerning the settlements in the West Bank. Right, so wait, so are you asking that question? Like, No, 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 I'm, I'm confirming what you yeah. said. They, right. There so, is, yes, there is a growing influence of uh, re- the religious discourse on Israeli politics. When you say also growing, it the- wasn't it? Isn't it like goes up and down? Like it's right now we're on. on the, unfortunately, it's growing even more than before. But it used to also be high earlier. I mean, a lot of people claim that the settlements, uh, you know, in West Bank w- would not make any sense other than for religious reasons. Like Israel would have saved itself a lot of headache if, like, it would if they didn't have so many settlements in the West Bank. Um, it's it's not it's bad for Israel. It's bad for everybody. Uh, the only the only reason why the insistence on the settlements in the West Bank would would make sense if if I mean makes sense quote unquote is that is for people to think for religious for religious reasons they have to be there 
Otherwise, it won't make any other sense. Uh, uh, I tend to agree. I tend to agree to what you just said. Okay. Uh, but then, but then you will have people that would tell you that for Israeli security, and I can see their their narrow military point. Israel must sit on the hilltops of the West Bank, and the best way to make sure that Israel sits there is to build also civilian settlements. That what that's what they would say. Mm. I personally, I agree with you. I think. If I consider myself a keen Zionist, and at the same time, I think the best thing for Israel is to pull out of most of the West Bank. That's my personal view. So I don't think they're beneficial, and I don't think that what leads the religious part of the settlement settlers to settle them, settle there, is utilitarian. I don't think they just do it because they think it's good for security mm. or it's beneficial for the it's state of Israel. I think they definitely do it, and they're not, they're outspoken about it because they think they're fulfilling a divine plan. Oof. And that's a stage in this divine plan. They, they, they're not very, they're not being very shy about it. Right. Uh, that's the, that's their main, that's their main purpose for them. The state of Israel is just a vessel so to they, get to to so, uh, to the fulfillment of this plan. So, do you think that the religious uh, people in Israel are kind of taking the secular people in Israel kind of hostage with this, with their influence because on their for, on foreign policy? Um, like without, you know, like then it's not just what what they're doing is bad for I don't know who whatever it's bad for Israel itself. Okay, so now the thing is that there are a lot of secular and non-religious uh, Jews. By the way, that just so you know, the first person who formed the League Against Religious Compulsion in Israel mm -hmm. that was in the fifties. The League Against a Religious Compulsion in Israel was a right-wing person. He was the son of Zev Jabotinsky. Zev Jabotinsky was the uh, iconic leader of the Israeli right wing. And his son was the one who fought for the total separation of religion and state. So it's not it's not necessarily a right wing left wing thing in Israel. Uh, the the way you you relate to religion. So back to what you've asked, there are a lot of secular Jews that think that Israel should stay in the West Bank for security reasons, for utilitarian reasons. So there, they I don't think they they feel that they are taken hostage right. yeah. by the by the by the religious uh, Zionists. I mean, but but that argument doesn't fly because, I mean, b the settlements in the West Bank has makes a two state solution. And I I, I want to go back to religion very fast, but yeah. just to just to point out that it makes a two state solution almost impossible, right? Um, and if you don't have a two state solution, what are you going to have? You're going to have uh, like what what is the other option? If you can't, no, like nobody wants a one state solution because now all of a sudden the demographics is going to change to for the, the religious Jewish people wouldn't want equal uh, like citizenship rights to everybody under a one state solution. So you either have apartheid or one state or two states. The two state solution has been made impossible by this impossible by the settlements i'm not the, sure it's impossible yet i'm not sure it's, it's already impossible but yes obviously uh, they 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 take pride in the fact that they're thwarting the two-state solution they, they're happy you know if you point out to them guys you're thwarting the two-state solution they yeah you know we we got what we wanted we we we've managed to 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 so what do they want this. they don't want one state either they don't want a one-state solution they don't want what do they want they want apartheid I'm I'm not the best spokesperson for these people. Okay. So it, it would be hard for me. It would be hard for me. I can only speculate. Okay. If you read if you read their political platform, there is a lot of verbal acrobatics to avoid saying that you are you will be discriminating a certain group in comparison to another. They they go you know they 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 do verbal somersaults to avoid. People being able to point a finger at them and say, "Oh, that's discrimination or apartheid or whatever you want to call it." But practically speaking, mm -hmm. practically speaking, they will they will reach a point where uh, it will, in practice, be. I, I don't think it's going to be as bad as apartheid, but that's splitting hairs already. The bottom line is, they will reach a point where they will. It will be a state that uh, discriminates in terms of civil rights against a. Two and a half million of its own population. Isn't that apartheid, uh, though? Uh, apartheid, uh, they will. Uh, you can go splitting here because right. apartheid has an element of physical separation of uh, all kinds. But the bottom line is, it will be discriminating against right. uh, I, against the Arab population. And so I, I, I'm very reluctant. I'm very reluctant mm -hmm. to 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 
use the term apartheid, apartheid inaccurately mm. because people will just jump on it and use it as a use it as a sl as a slur. Do, uh, I, I want yeah. to, to well, be more accurate. But well, the, the bottom line even, is the discrimination I, will be there. Right. The discrimination will be there. The situation will not be democratic, and I can only speculate about how they want to resolve it. I think that them being religious, they're not very rational. They think, okay, we don't know how we're going to resolve it. But since we are now fulfilling a, a divine plan, God will come and he will find some kind of a solution we haven't thought of. I think that's, <laughs> okay. that's the way, that's so the way what, their mind works. What, what do you think is the best solution as, is, as a non-religious Zionist? Two-state solution. Two-state solution. Okay. Two-state solution, non non two -state solution. Two -state Full solution. Stop. Okay. Two -state solution with, a, with a significant Jewish majority in one and a significant Arab-Palestinian majority in the other. But wouldn't that's, that be like... A, this, isn't this what the wouldn't that be like an ethno state for each it one of these? Define define an ethno state, and then I'll be able to answer. Like, what, what do, when you mean? like you deciding who's a citizen of what country based on their race? Oh no, because you you will still have you will still. It's not that I want to to. It's not that I think that you should uh, force Israeli Arabs out of Israel. They will be they will remain citizens in Israel, and hopefully they will you know they will enjoy they would feel that they are treat, being treated as equal. So. Mm. Uh, I, right now in Israel, an Israeli Arab citizen, he can vote to the parliament, he can, you know, he g have, a pro have a property, whatever, you know. Uh, a lot uh, of people not... don't know this. There's a lot of Arab Israelis, like a lot of people when they think Arab within, the, within those areas, they're thinking about the Gaza Strip and the West Bank. But no, within Israel, in what, Israel, yes, about you have Israel. Twenty percent citizens are Arab. Yeah, twenty percent of citizens, full citizens. We're not talking. Yes. Yeah, and people yes. that vote, so, uh, and within their own, there are Arab politicians in Israel. Yeah, the government. I think today there are. I think there are 11, 11 Arab uh, members of the Knesset, which is the Israeli parliament. Yeah, uh, I mean that's, least, that's. I think. I mean, a lot of people. When we have to, understand, I just have to say this: when we criticize Israel, a lot of people will say, um, "Well, it's it's much better than its neighbors." And of course, of course, it's much better than its neighbors. Um, I mean, I can't imagine the, any of the neighbors having Jews in their parliaments, like, like uh, <laughs> any of Israel. I think, actually, I think <laughs> Iran has a Jewish parliament member of the parliament. Yeah, parliament. Uh, I, I mean, to the degree, I'm saying to the degree <laughs> that is the, to the degree of secularism and uh, tolerance uh, within Israel. Um, but, but that doesn't mean that we can't shed on Israel's politics just because it's better than the lowest standard that is out there, right? Oh, no. I Israelis yeah. are doing it all the time. I mean, right. if you, if you want to hear criticism of Israeli politics, go to Israel and get a taxi and the taxi driver. I, I guarantee you by the end of the taxi ride, you'll hear all the criticism right. you want about Israeli politics. Yeah, I mean, so, that's a, and, that's a, and that's a great thing. That's a great thing about Israel is that there's a lot of people in there that shed on their own politics, the, the government the governments all uh, the time yeah, all the time but when when somebody um we do it when we say that israel fucked up over there people are like oh why are you anti-israel okay like, no like, yeah go on we, yeah, yeah. So, we said, what are, you, "What are you talking about? Every country has every country has its own fair share of shitty policies. The, uh, it, it would be a, it would be a miracle if Israel didn't have shitty, shitty policies. <laughs> of course, we can yeah. point at them and tell, say that it's wrong. Go, yeah." Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, I personally, I have no problems with with people criticizing uh, Israeli politics, uh, as long as they, you know, as long as they get their facts right. Uh, I have no issues with there. The main reason, the main reason why I I get into those discussions because I see people are a lot of time misinformed. Uh, so, uh, uh, so that's that's why I get into those those issues. So they, so for example, with the issue that you brought with uh, the the thing that you brought up with the religious justification. No, it's not only a religious justification. There are a lot of Zionists that are not religious, and their justification for staying in the country is purely historical. What? Yeah, uh, yeah. Let me actually read. Sorry, the intro. I want to make sure we don't no, no, no. Uh, make sure I don't ignore the live chat. By the way, if you guys wanted me to read anything, make sure you tag. Uh, Atheist Republic, both on Facebook and on uh, YouTube. Be just saying that Zion leaders often um, of other countries push for Israel. Hashem is saying the land was populated by 95% to 98% Palestinians before the creation of Israel. So I don't understand what right 
Did they have to create their state? Okay, let's stop. But, let's stop for. I, I, can you I, hold on for this, Hashem? Okay. Uh, Hashem, in 1947, between the Jordan River and the and the sea, there were for every for every Jew there were two Palestinian Arabs. So it was non 90 something percent. It was more in the terms of of a third versus two thirds. Just so we get the facts right. Theo Mikey is saying here's the. I mean, I don't. I really don't understand that historical argument. The people that are born. In, why did they? Why should in in a place and they, they're like I'm born here? Like oh, but your parents came here illegally. Well, fuck! I I was born here. Like who? Why? Why? I don't. I never understand when people are like, oh, our ancestors thousands of years ago. Who gives a shit what our ancestors did thousands of years? Okay, ago? But, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. First of all, I'll tell you who gives a shit. The yeah. the people the people in the other countries where Jews lived, they gave a shit, and that because otherwise they would tell the Jews this is your country too. But they, but they didn't tell that the Jews, they said, Jew, go to Palestine. So the Jews went to Palestine, but then they came to them and said, Jew, get out of Palestine. Yep. So it, it, it turns, Jews found themselves in a position where they just had to find a place where, where they're not the foreigners. Yeah, but and hindsight, the, but if you look at it, didn't they pick the worst place on the planet, given that they're surrounded by everybody that hates them? <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, in the well, middle of, uh, I mean, in a place yes, that has, yes the and, land yes has nothing no. to offer. It's the worst land in the middle of the worst place, t uh, surrounded by anti-Semites everywhere. Like, it's, it's like, it's, I like, if looking back, shouldn't they have picked another place on the planet? Okay, <laughs> so we, another another bit of Jewish history uh, of of Zionist history. Again, we we we're uh, we're diverting from religion, but it's an interesting question. I'll I'll, I'll answer it. Uh, in the ni in 1919, uh, Jews actually sought sought the approval of the Arabic Arab national movement. At that time, they, they still didn't think of themselves as Syrians, Iraqis and Palestinians because they still had the vision of one Arab, big Arab kingdom. And the leader was uh, Faisal, Faisal, the one who fought with Lawrence of Arabia against the Turks. Hmm. So the Chaim Weizmann, the leader of the Zionist movement, met, met with uh, Faisal in 1919 and they got his approval for a Jewish homeland in what was then called Palestine. So it's not like the Jews said, we're going to come there and everyone's going to hate us and no one's going to accept us, uh, but we're still going to go there. No, they thought that they're going to come there and they, uh, most of them uh, said, we're going to come there with all of our science and the technology and we're going to f make the land fertile and we're going to bring medicine and everyone's going to be happy that we came. Uh, that now, Zev Jabotinsky, the leader of the right-wing Zionists, said, don't elude yourself. They would never accept you. They'd always yeah. want you out, we're and Jews. you will have to go there. We're, we're and you will have to nobody, go there and build, build an iron wall. He wrote an article called "The Iron Wall." You'll have to build there an iron wall, huh. and and until they would get tired of trying and break this wall, don't don't think they're going to be happy but with you. Do you, you think they would, the Jews that leave running away from Europe and Russia and everywhere else? Uh, wouldn't have when didn't they look into uh, Madagascar or, or so? Or there were all kinds. They, they looked. They, they were looking for the Kimberleys in Australia, Madagascar. I yeah. don't know. So I, they, I, they, you, do uh, you think Western you, Kenya, what, which was then Uganda, part of Uganda, they were looking for an area in Western okay, Kenya. Okay, Uganda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wouldn't they have like if we go back? Wouldn't the, wouldn't their lives be so much better right now if they picked one of those other places? Don't you think? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I'm very okay. bad at speculation. I think, okay. I think no, no, no. But the answer, uh, more seriously, mm. I don't think so, mm. because I can tell you, I can tell you as a secular Jew that the reason that I felt attached to the country where I grew up was not only because, not only because the United Nations said so, but because I was walking, hiking in the country, and I reached to archaeological sites with, with that where they found writings in my mother tongue, or. Uh, bits of history of my country, so obviously I, of my people, so obviously I felt more, my sense of identity was nah, more complete I never when that. I lived in that country. So in that sense, I think they were far better off in, in Israel than in any, any other country. Furthermore, you could, uh, they you were could make the same argument, you could make the same, okay, here, I'll give you, you want identity and history, then yeah. you could be like, well, the Jewish people were exiled, so part of your identity is to be everywhere. <laughs> like, see, you could make stuff up as much as you go. Like, oh no, the 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 fact that you were exiled, the fact that the temple was like, 
I don't know, these stories, people when they say like, oh, I just identify with this. Well, you could identify with a million other things if you just just use your imagination. <laughs> and the answer, the answer is that the Jews, the Jews tried, but okay. they, but it didn't work for them. So someone like Theodore Herzl, he was an atheist and he wasn't a Zionist for most for most of his life. He died young, yeah. But he saw that it doesn't work. He said, "Well, I can I can say I'm Germanic all I want." He was a pan-Germanist. There was a period in his life where he was a pan-Germanist. I can say I'm a Germanist all I want. But that's not going to, you know, the other Germans, they won't accept me as one. And Alfred Dreyfus could have said he was a French patriot all he wanted. So, no I one mean, cares. Look, look, like in, in a world where United States is such a young country, Canada is such a young country, Australia is such a young country. And look, they're doing fine. They're doing great. So this whole idea of like, oh, it's our history. We need identity. It's just bullshit to me because look the at how... Reason, look the at only how reason... Yeah, yeah. The reason they're doing great is because they treated the people that were there when they came far worse than Israel treated the people that were there when Israel was established. Okay, that's that... the only reason they're doing great. Oh my if God. They okay. treated, if they treated the Indians like Israel treated the Arabs, they wouldn't be doing so great. Holy shit. Okay? So you so... Just, did you just excuse genocide? No, I didn't excuse it. I just explained why they're doing okay. great. If they would, if, if they would, if they would uh, leave the Indians to be as strong as they were, I don't think they were doing so great. Or, or the indigenous people elsewhere. Okay. They just came there and they weren't bothered with, uh, with issues of moral... Well, they were in their own life view, maybe they thought they were mor uh, moral. Right. But the bottom line is they were doing great because the people that, obje that opposed their presence there were nearly annihilated. So right. now, they can say, now they can say we're democratic and we're doing great. But uh, of course, when when you when you reduce your your opposition to to one percent of the population around you, then you you of course you're going to do great. I do, I'm not saying that's a, that is a morally yeah, yeah. correct way of doing so it, but I'm explaining, explaining the historical. Okay, yeah, yeah, you're explaining something. You're not justifying I, it. That's yeah, I'm not saying. justifying it. I'm just explaining how come the United States is doing so good. Yeah, uh, it, uh, I I. I think that so you think there's a would... double standard because Israel was a love. You're saying that Israel, the Jews, um, the way United States colonized, uh, you know, the the lands of the Indians and can and Euro the rest of the Europeans in Canada and Australia and northern, and northern Mexico, by the way, northern Mexico. You say it was way more brutal. Uh, Israel, the Jews, when they they were a lot more uh, gentle towards the people that were living there and. You're saying there's a double standard when it comes to demonizing I, Israel. I, yeah. I wouldn't call. I wouldn't call it. First of all, I don't think it's double standard because I think the 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 demonizers of Israel today are very happy to demonize the U.S. and <laughs> oh, Canada yeah, and right, Australia right. just the same. You're so right. I don't think they apply the. And I wouldn't say also a double standard in the sense that when the U.S. and uh, Australia and the others treated the indigenous people there the way they did. Uh, at that time, I don't think they realized they were doing something so, so wrong. So but The argument yeah, against that, by the way, is that, um, again, this is... I'm not was, saying that that was the right thing to do, but... But, but, but there was advocate, though. A lot of people say that the Indians were killing each other way more than the, the people, that, the Europeans that arrived were yeah, killing Yeah, but them. that doesn't make it right. Yes, it's... Uh, but they say, like, I, at the end of the day, it benefited them... Actually, I no, never mind. But the disease, the the way, the main reason the Indians were killed was not through guns, was by the disease that the Europeans brought, and that wasn't really by design. But anyways, let's we're getting off topic. Yeah, it, um, okay. So maybe the the point I'm trying to say is the the opposition was reduced in whatever disease killing. It doesn't. It, right. The point is the opposition was re reduced to such a state that it was no big deal now to to build up your own country and do great. Right. Uh, uh, so. Yeah, but uh, go, let's, going, let's, going let's, back to Israel and Palestine and, okay. and hopefully back to religion at a certain point. Yeah, yeah. In Israel, uh, the Zionists, when they came to the country, when they st started thinking about building, having a country, the first thing they, they were trying to do is to reach out to the national leadership of the Arabs at the time, which was Faisal, the Hashemite Faisal, and reach, get his approval. And Faisal gave his approval, his approval, but then made a comment on the agreement provided that all the rights of the inhabitants of Palestine will be preserved. So that was, it's not like the Jews came and said, oh, let's go and just kick everyone out and we don't care what they think. Yes, they did care what they thought and they tried to sort their approval. Uh, now, there is, now, you mentioned that it's a shitty place because it's surrounded by enemies, but yes, it is. 
It's just that Israel was lucky that the enemies it chose were evidently quite incompetent. So uh, it's, imagine if Israel would have, uh, have existed in a place where the enemies were more better organized or competent, it would have been my, maybe even worse. So, uh, but I, I'm, I'm going to, by the way, Facebook live chat people, if you want to make sure I read something, please mention Atheist Republic. If I don't read the YouTube live chat questions, I'm going to miss them. Theo Mike is saying, here's the question. Did the Zionist movement, despite its secular motivation, radicalize some Orthodox Jews to create more religious connections? Um, yeah. Another one, Theo Mike is saying, is it fair to say that the religious Zionists are mixed or ambiguous about their positions on how to handle the state? Uh, uh, let me... Oh my God! There's okay. I'm gonna okay. Yeah. So let me tell you something. Uh, no, I'm gonna just fix the question. Um, okay, go on. Just answer those. I have so many okay, of my so... own questions. I don't know if I'm gonna get to them, but go on I, because I want to get into Paul, the influence of religion in yes. so many other things in Israel when it comes to gay rights, women rights, uh, the influence of religion in 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 you know in business. Um, and you know, is it getting worse? Is it getting better? Uh, so there's a lot of things, uh, but I'm gonna keep trying. Okay, go. Ahead. Okay, so pick pick a question from from the live feed that you think I want. Just, you, I want just, you want Mikey, to... just answer the Theo Mikey questions, and then let's move on to other things. So what was it? Just repeat the question for oh, me for a second. I have to scroll all the way up. Sorry, sorry, uh, Theo Mikey. Is it? Um, hold on. So the Zionist movement, despite its secular motivation, radicalized some Orthodox Jews to create more religious connections. And he's also saying, is it fair to say that the religious Zionists are mixed or ambiguous about their position on how to handle the state? OK, so uh, did it radicalize the uh, Orthodox Jews? And so I'll have to do some terminology here. Uh, the the Orthodox Jews uh, are divided into two major groups. You have the Zionist Orthodox Jews. These are the ones that think it was a good thing to build, to set up the state of Israel. Uh, they support full-heartedly Zionism because for them Zionism uh, conforms with the with the divine plan and uh, with the idea of establishing again the the state of uh, state of Israel in the religious context of it. Uh, then you have the ultra-Orthodox Jews. These are Jews that around the 18th century, when Jews when Europe opened up to Jews and Jews suddenly could assimilate to a degree into the European society, they thought it wasn't a good thing. And they tried as much as they could to prevent their communities from assimilating into the European culture, which, is, which made them stricter, religiously speaking, and not very happy with any innovations. Those ultra-Orthodox Jews, some of them think, some of them are are clearly anti-Zionist. They think Zionism is an interference with the divine plan. And once God wants us to have our, uh, our country, it will build it. But now they're against Zionism. They're saying that and until the Messiah comes, we shouldn't have Israel as a country yes. until the Messiah yes. comes back. Don't push God's plan. Don't don't go pushing God. When God will decide, he will send you the Messiah until is, then. Is, is, are, there, are there a lot of them or most or not? Like this seems like a fringe movement to me. Am I, or, or... Uh, I'm not sure, to be honest, because yeah. some of them... Co col collaborate and are involved in, in the Israeli politics probably for utilitarian reasons. So because, because they can get budget, because they get, get, get religion more, more into the society. So I don't know. Some of them refuse to collaborate with Israel at all. So they won't even collect their social security money because they don't recognize the government at all. They, they won't deal with anything that has to do with the state. They just live in the country, but they will, they will just deny behave as if the country doesn't exist. They would try and use foreign currency and not Israeli currency, whatever they can do to, to distance themselves from the country. The other part accepts the country and even have some political influence, but religiously speaking, I'm not sure they think the creation of Israel was a good idea. And then you have, and I'm going back to Theo uh, question, then you have those Jews that said uh, that the, the formation of the state of Israel was the beginning of the redemption in the religious the religious sense of it and the 67 the six day war when we got even to get to the to the even more historical parts of the of the historical israel is even another stage of this redemption they so saw that them, as a miracle from god didn't they like 
Uh, I I guess I guess they they always think God is involved. So I guess they <laughs> when they thought this was also a miracle from God. I mean, I mean, But, I mean, to, 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 when you defeat they, they, how many Arab countries were at fighting? Uh, Six. Main, the, the, The main armies were there. There were four main armies, and then other few countries contributed a bit. But so you but have a tiny army... little new. So you have a tiny little new country, uh, yes. and six countries attack it uh, with their armies, and Israel wins. Uh, to them, it sounds to them is like how could God not be on our side if we're winning? Yes, this, right. Th that's the way. That's the way they see it. But but going back to someone mentioned here about the language of nationalism. Going back to that, the main I think the main reason Israel won or the Jews won it was like half a million Jews against 40 million Arabs, pretty much in terms of the size of the of the nations. It was because they already they were very good at developing their collective identity, and they worked from it when during the war. The Palestinian Arabs suddenly in 1918 or when uh, 1920 when the when the Ottoman Empire was carved between the to Palestine, Jordan, uh, Iraq, etc. Suddenly, someone suddenly they had to think of themselves as members of the same of an, the same nation. So, uh, and it took them by the time they figured out that they have to act as a collective and did it effectively. The Jews were already fully organized. So it was far. So when for, the war of '48 came, the Jews were far better mobilized and organized than the Arabs, oh. and the, and and enough also to fend the invading regular Arab armies from the other countries. So I don't think God was involved at all. I think it was due to very good organization of the Jews. But, uh, okay, I, can, I can't, uh, obviously, I cannot debate a religious person about it. Yeah, but, but a lot of people say, well, they, obviously they won because they had U.S. backing. But then no, just, in, no, 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 that's, that's, at that that's time, a at that demonstration time, of historical ignorance. Yeah, because, a lot of people don't know that is United States actually at some point put sanctions on Israel. Yes, no, the, the United, <laughs> in 1948, the United States not only put an embargo of weapon sales, right. it also put an embargo of sales of steel plates that the Jews needed just to armor the cars, not even, they didn't even need the weapons. But the U.S. Uh, sang, uh, placed an embargo on weapons and steel sales to the Middle East. Uh, and then the... the The people who did help the Jews at the time was the Czech, uh, Czechoslovakia, which was uh, they, they were the main so, weapon supplies of Israel. So, so okay, uh, so going uh, going to back to religion in Israel. So, what, what, why is it that it's said that uh, by by almost every uh, main politician in Israel is that Israel? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. That Israel is a Jewish state. Isn't okay, that, so. Isn't that sound so anti? What does it mean when they say Israel okay, is a Jewish so state? Yeah. It means to different people, it means different things. So, as a secular atheist Jew, what it means to me is this is a state where most of the inhabitants choose to define themselves as Jewish. If most of the inhabitants of the state choose to define themselves as Jewish, the state is Jewish. Even tomorrow, if in Switzerland, most of the people in Switzerland would define themselves as Jewish, it would turn Switzerland into a Jewish state by by just because of the, by by virtue of the reality. But this is for me the meaning of a Jewish state. Of course, if you speak to a religious person and said, well, if it's a Jewish state, then of course we cannot have public transportation on the Sabbath. How can a Jewish state allow that? How can we allow this, 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 and the other? Uh, but, but if you ask but, me, but, but but here's the thing: there's so many problem. I have so many problems with calling uh, any state a Jewish state. First of all, if if it's if the first problem is that the the word Jew is such so confusing. I mean, you know, when we when we criticize Islam, we already get so much shit from people saying we're bigots, even though or racist, even though only 20% of Muslims are Arab. There's so many different races of you know, Muslims, Islam is not an uh, ethnicity or uh, it's just an idea. But the, even with Islam, with that level of confusion exists, when it comes to shitting on Judaism, that level of confusion just increases because, because the word Jew applies to th three different things at the same time. It applies to, we're talking about religion, and then we're, talk, we're talking about culture, and we're talking about ethnicity at the same time. Uh, yes. And it could mean different things to different people. So when you want to sh when you want to shit on d the Jewish religion, you get people are always confused, like oh you're an anti-Semite. But the thing is that when you and this problem here, when you when you say it's a Jewish state, you could then is you can now it's a great way to sneak in for sneak in religion 
because so it's yes. kind of like it's kind of like saying it's an Islamic problem. Islamic state or a Christian state. But even even if it doesn't mean religion, I still have a problem with it because if it, if you're talking about ethnicity, what would you be okay, for example, with the United States saying that United States is a white country? Or like, I, like, would you I, would that be something that you support? Or like, this is a white country. <laughs> I I would. Uh, white has to to do with a very specific biological property. Right. But when Poland says we are a Polish country, I'm very confident with it. I'm very com comfortable with it. When the Czech Republic says we are a Czech country, I'm mm. comfortable with it. I, I don't I don't see it as a I don't see the nation state as a as a problem by itself. I see a nation state as a problem. So when isn't, you start that, justifying... isn't, it, isn't that the definition of an ethno state? Uh, I I don't know I don't know the subtleties between a nation state and an ethno state. But I won't have a problem hmm. if members of a of an ethnic group says, look, the only problem the only way for us to resolve our problem as members of this group is to have a state of our own. I why, why, does, why, does that is, why does the state has to be defined by the by the majority of the of its ethnic group? Why does because, that because because sometimes the problem of this collective are defined because of that collective identity and the state is the tool to resolve it. So is it this, doesn't that, so isn't that is become a so, problem bigger more than a solution when you def, when you do the things like that? No, I don't think so. I think I think in case of the Jews, it, it worked very well. I think for the Jews, this solution worked very well. Uh, the fact that there there is a state that is defined as the homeland of the Jews was something that was something that, I, historically speaking, uh, helped to solve problems. I more mean, than it's creative. fine if have something how something. I mean, the origin story of a nation doesn't have to define that forever, does it? Like uh, uh, any country could progress. Like we understand, like, you could be like, okay, the the purple people were being discriminated, and they went here and they started their own um, thing, and now they. But now that the now, why do we? Why does it have to be defined by the origin story? Why can't be like, okay, well, this is how you can become a citizen. It has nothing to do with your ethnicity. Um, I mean, just because something started in in a way, why does it always have to? Why does it? Uh, we even if you could argue for the benefits of why it made sense at that time, if you could argue that, why does it mean that it always has to be that way? Do you know what I mean? I don't think it necessarily always. I don't think that it will have to remain that way for the next. But when you call it years. a Jewish state, you're you're basically picking sides. You're kind because... of communicating to the to the Arab citizens of your country. That you technically don't belong here, no? Uh, no, not necessarily. Because if you read Israel's uh, Charter of Independence, then you see that it's a very balanced document. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, recently with the nation law that happened this year, the right wing try, uh, is is trying to chisel through this this very balanced uh, situation. How and so? I How so? How is the white right wing doing that? Uh, again, uh, we are we are diverging from religion, okay. but but and no, I don't have not, the law in front. Wait, wait, wait! I don't have the law in front of me to be very uh, to to tell you exactly what the problem is. But based, for example, uh, the nation law demoted Ar Arab Arabic was the official or language of Israel until a year ago. Right. Uh, the nation law demoted the the status of Arab language from a, an official language to a language with a special status. <laughs> so. So what it means is that in practice everything will remain the same. You'll have the you you'll have a, an Arabic education system. You will have a, a government issuing its um, you know publications also in Arabic, so the Arabs can read it, etc. Et but they had to put this this article in the law as if to say it's it's kind of sticking their finger in the eye yeah right? you, it's kind of so, like you guys are secondary but but yeah, so, this whole uh, this whole argument in practice things don't change this is how you slowly change things in practice first you change things symbolically and then after a while when things have ch changed symbolically for and and stood like way then you start changing things in practice by pointing out the things that you change symbolically well, like well symbolically we're supposed to be like this or like but just because things don't change in practice doesn't mean that that's not the ultimate goal, right? 
Yeah, so, so going back to your question with the things, uh, I, I generally agree what you said, okay. but, uh, and that's why a lot of people have a problem with the symbolism, so to speak, of this particular nation law. But if you go back to the Charter of, of Independence, it's a very balanced document. Uh, so, and the, for me, if you ask me, how can it be a Jewish state and, and you can still tell the Arab, this is your land too? I would say it is a Jewish state in the sense that most of it is, its inhabitants define themselves as Jews and that it will accept any Jew that wants to come there. Because that's the problem that Jews had before in history and that's one of the things that it resolves, that when Jews were in trouble, they were knocking on doors of different countries and no one wanted to accept them. Uh, so that's one thing that the Jewish state resolves. But in any, any other respect, as far as I'm concerned, and not only me, it's like even the leader as I said, even the leader of the right-wing Zionism, Zhev Jabotinsky, was very clear that he wanted the Arabs to be treated fully as full equals in the state that will that will be there. Uh, so it's not a lefty, it's not a lefty liberal thing, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so I I can see I can see this tension being resolved and the country still being a Jewish state. For me, the Jewish state. Is main, has mainly to do with the identity of most of its inhabitants. But why? Uh, what, what? What would be the cost if you didn't call it the Jewish state? Why not just not call it the Jewish state? Why, why not? Okay. Why Let's not say, focus on the we're a secular state for um, for everyone for every well for yeah for everybody that comes that becomes a citizen in a legal way. Okay, because. Uh, the first of all that was that was the how the un chose to define it but it it is important and it is the goal of the country to remain a country where jews jews will never be refused to come to and where jews will be the majority so now uh, you're going to say okay so how how are you going to maintain this majority you know, are, are you going by to telling telling this? people to come back, all the Jews in the world to come back to Israel? That's, that's one. That's that's one. That's one one thing. And another thing, and this is what the left wing Zionists want, is to withdraw rather than annex all the areas that jeopardize the Jewish majority. Right. So well, they would come okay. and say, okay, the West Bank, we can annex it and give citizenship to everyone, but then we will lose the Jewish majority. Let's just withdraw from there because we're jeopardizing the Jewishness of the country. Right. Or it's democracy. We won't be able to have it both if stay there. So that's yeah. that's how that, that's that's how you. You can't play this game forever. It. At some point, what are you going to do with West Bank? Like forever, you can't. Like at some point, something is going to change. No. No, you have. We can withdraw from the West Bank. That's one thing we can do. Okay. Uh, and then and then and then the problem will be a mere problem between two two neighbors not getting along with the border between them, rather than two ethnicities in the same country. Uh, wouldn't you, don't you want to ask me yeah. stuff more about religion? Because yeah, okay, they, y yes. Well, it's I a mean, very interesting topic. It just we are we keep we keep uh, yeah, derailing okay. the session there. Well, I mean, isn't this about religion? The nature of Israel as a country, because to me, when you it's when you call it a Jewish state, you either are talking about an ethno state or a theocracy. Or going in that direction, isn't things getting? Don't don't you think that as you mentioned the right wing, is, uh, don't you think that they're they're using race as an excuse to squeeze in to smuggling religion? They're like every I, time every time you mention like, hey, you guys seem to be getting religion more and more involved in politics. They're like, no, 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 no. We're talking about culture. We're talking about the Jewish identity. Yeah. So, but so then, there's but then always the, yeah. Okay. There is always this stealth campaign mm. uh, in the education system, in the public sphere, uh, and you always have to see whether is where is the fine line between tradition and religion. And one of the links that I've put, one of the links that I've put uh, in the description, is to uh, the secular forum. The secular forum uh, is a forum of secular parents that that, that notice that their kids are getting more and more religious content in their curriculum uh, and they decide and they start decided to start monitoring it and take action about it so they're always this stealth campaign and so what are some examples? Now, by the way by the way i'm not sure i think the religious people they don't they don't understand what my problem is they see it as one so so they look at me and say look this guy this guy is a bit confused the when we he doesn't understand that the religion is is uh, just a part of his identity too as a jew but mm -hmm. my answer is 
Greek, Greece is a Greek state, and you have Greek people living there. But I bet you my bottom dollar that most Greeks don't worship Zeus. I'm pretty <laughs> sure they don't. And, and that doesn't... And uh, they worship a Jew who lived uh, thousands of kilometers away from there. They don't worship Zeus, but that doesn't make them less Greek. Uh, so I'm, at this I'm familiar with that type of people. There's a whole bunch of new people in Iran that are saying that um, all Iranians are Zoroastrian by in their it's in their identity, even if they don't. Even, all the Muslims and the atheists and the, these new Christian Iranians, okay. they don't understand that Zoroastrianism is in their DNA. I like yeah sure whatever but but I but it's very similar I guess like a lot of, a lot of religious Jews think like this is part of your religion is something that you can't just uh, just you know say like well no I'm not religious I'm Jewish but not religious no you don't understand this is part of your identity right is that similar yes yeah. yeah and they and they concern me that's why religiously speaking even though I'm an atheist like if you're a Muslim and you become become a athe an atheist. For them, you're not a Muslim anymore, right? Uh, you're an apostate. But as far as the religious people are concerned, I'm still a Jew. Right. I can be as atheist as I want. Yeah. But as far as the Jewish religion is concerned, I am still a Jew. Well, that and this is this, Islam and Christianity are not like that because they're more modern religions, historically speaking. Yeah. But Judaism, the universal Ju religion. Yes. Ju but Judaism and Zoroastrianism, because they're more ancient religion. Uh, they see it as part of your ethnic uh, uh, ethnicity. They see yes. your religion, so that's why they think like these no I compare that to this to the, to them. Yeah. But yeah. And okay. by the way, hey, one, since you brought Iran already, the name of Iran is Iran. But I think, as a country, it would be fair, even though not everyone is Persian in Iran. I think it would be fair to say that this is a Persian country in the sense that most of Iranians are Persian. The 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 language is per, mostly is Persian. So even though you have uh, Kurds and Azeris and the uh, Balochis, Iran as a rule you can say it's a is a Persian country. So well, you don't get me sir. I ha a lot of okay. a lot of the people sorry, sorry. in Iran hate me because they they are ethno nationalists uh, and uh, they don't like me. They thought they liked me because I was anti Islam. And now they don't yeah. like me anymore because apparently I, um, I, I betrayed my own race. But anyways, um, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Yeah. Can you give us some examples on how religion in Israel is yes. becoming more influential and is sneaking in into people's lives? So I'll start with describing more of the status quo before we got there so people will say mm -hmm. the, the progression. Mm -hmm. So this, we spoke about the rabbinical institution having monopoly on marriages. Then you have the Sabbath, where uh, in most uh, Israeli, uh, Jewish Israeli towns and cities, you don't have public transportation on the Sabbath. Uh, officially speaking, you're not supposed to open your business on Sabbath, even though the municipalities now, they don't care. Many of them, they, they won't even bother giving you the fine. They just say, oh, we're not going to enforce that. Uh, and then another thing is that if in any government facility or in the army, the food has to be kosher. Uh, so if you are in the army, and I can see the point in that, of course, because you, 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 you enlist in the army religious Jews, you want them to be able to eat, so they make sure the food is kosher. Hence, it's also halal, because kosher is stricter than... If it's something is kosher, it's also halal. So if you're a Muslim not, soldier... Not really. You're... For, you to, for it to be halal, you have to say bismillah before cutting the head off. And you have to point uh, it towards the, ka the Kaaba. Put the head. From what I understand, okay, you are a better Muslim. You were a better Muslim than I would ever be <laughs> in the time that you were a Muslim. But from what I understand, a Muslim uh, has no problem eating in a religious Jew's house. The what if it's kosher? The a Muslim will no, still eat it, but they should. No, it, the Jewish people touch that. That means it's najas. Ah, that's me, that's you, you Shiite guys. Yeah, you think it's najas. But <laughs> I, I, I'm I can, not Shia anymore. Don't call me Shia. No, no, ex Shia. Uh, ex -Shia. Okay, but okay. you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. But but I I can tell you for a fact when I was in the army I was sitting in the same table with Muslim soldiers. They were eating the same food as myself with no problem. Because uh, I think you have. I think as a Muslim you have it if there's no option. I don't know. Anyways, okay. I, I'm sure they found. They, sure they, they find a way around they, it. They're not going to go hungry. They're going to find loopholes in their own system. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure they found they, they found ways around it. But yeah. so so you have the kosher thing that uh, uh, government institutions, if they have kitchens or the army, they have they have to be kosher. Uh, we spoke about the Sabbath, public transportation and, uh, and uh, businesses, and we spoke about uh, personal status. Now, since that status quo, you go to a point 
where certain streets in Israel are closed even for private transportation on the Sabbath because most of the people who live there are religious, religious Jews. So the, the local municipalities passed bylaws that would block those particular streets on the Sabbath, for example. Uh, then you have uh, an example, you have the education system that I, examples that I've just given. So I'll just give you a, an example of how they sneak in religious content, because I, 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 I've, I've been out of Israel now for 10 years, so I follow it through the web, but I've just, I made, did some homework towards how, that. How long did you live there? You were born there, and how long did you I live was there? born there, and I lived there until 2007. Okay. And then I moved to Australia. Okay, okay. So, for example... So you uh, betrayed your country. Israel is trying to get all the Jews back to Israel, and you're leaving Israel. I gave about three years of my life, no, actually four years accumulative to my country, so I have my conscience clear. <laughs> okay, okay, go ahead. Three, four years of my life belong to the state of Israel, so... Okay, I, uh, I, what I, do you mean I, by that? Is that? Do you mind me asking? What does that mean? No, because I, was a, I, I served Israel. Oh, I mean, like, served. Oh, it's mandatory, you know? though. Isn't it's it? mandatory. It? If, you're a, if you're Jewish, it's mandatory, and of course the ultra-Orthodox found a oh. way not to do it. See, that's religious so, privilege right there. Absolutely, of course. It pisses Fuck. off uh, seculars to no end. But yeah. the main reason secular so people are... Just to be clear to our audience, if you... Uh, everybody in, in Actually, it's, it's, I think it's the most uh, aggressive uh, than any other country, because even in Iran, only the, one of the other countries that has mandatory military serving, the girls don't have to serve. In Israel, okay. both boys and girls have mandatory serving, unless you're an Orthodox Jew. Uh, no, unless okay. Now, now we're getting now we. That's that's an important detail to mention. Mm -hmm. The official wording of the law says that you have to go to the army if the Minister of Defense calls you to do it. Mm. Practically, what the Minister of Defense is doing, he's calling, uh, he's calling Jews, uh, and then other than Jews, it calls. It would call the Druze men. Druze is a. I'm. 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 I think you know what Druze are. It's a. It's a sect that diverged yeah. from the Shia. Yeah, and very, they are very secretive about their views. Very secretive about the religion. Yeah. So the Druze men are also called to the service. Uh, <laughs> Muslims, if they want, Muslims, if they want, they can join, but they don't. They're not obliged to. This is and not very. This is none of this sounds secular to me. Like people. Picking like first this this religion, no. then that religion. If you're this religion, you don't have to, but you can. Like this yeah, it's, <laughs> they, it's very, it's very. The, the line is very blurry in right. that in this uh, in this sense. Right. Uh, so so what the arm? But then the ultra orthodox came to when the country was formed. They came said first of all, we we don't want our girls to go unless they unless they want to. But we don't want our girls to go to the army because you know they'll be with boys and. Uh, oh God no, knows, with boys and girls. Knows what's going to happen there. And to be honest, that as, someone who, served in the Israeli, okay. as yeah. someone who served in the Israeli army, yeah, I can see their point. The things happen there when you put a lot of uh, 18, 19, and 20 year olds together in a closed place, but uh, of both sexes. But uh, good. We're so I can fun. see what, what what they were worried about. I just don't think it's a good excuse to to right. why why would my sister have to serve two years and and her religious uh, neighbor wouldn't? Yeah, it's not very fair. Right. Uh, but anyway, can you uh, just be so, religious for a couple of years until the age passes that you have to serve? Like no. Like, uh, some girls pretend? do. Some girls do exactly that. They just go and say, "Yeah, I'm religious." And, uh, <laughs> really? And they avoid, <laughs> and they avoid the conscription. Uh, and they have, they have, they ask her several questions. They have to. I don't remember. They they have to show that they do this. You know, three thing. I don't remember exactly what. Mm. But if they, I know, I know a girl who did it, and she was not really religious. I can tell you for a fact. Yeah, uh, so you can, why doesn't everybody do this? Why doesn't everybody just be like, hey, I, I just, I just found God, and I'm, I'm not gonna. Serve. Okay, so yeah, I don't know. I, uh, I'll answer this in a bit. Just let me finish the conditions okay, because okay, it's not, okay, go, not go. over yet. Okay, good. Now, ultra orthodox Jews, the ones I mentioned before, they came, they came to the government when the country was established and said, look, all we want is to preserve a. A few hundred of very bright, very bright young people in our community that they will stay and continue studying in the yeshiva in the religious uh, uh, scholarly institutions instead of going to the army. So just allow us to absolve a few hundreds from from the service uh, for that, and the and the state agreed to that. In practice, what happened that yes, several, some of them that went to those yeshivas were absolved, 
Again, Yeshiva is the scholar institute of the ultra-Orthodox. Others just want, found ways to not to go to the army. They went to psychiatrists or were, got their me, fake their medicals. And a few of them did enlist. In 1977, that was the first year that the right wing could have formed the government. And the ultra-Orthodox party came to them and said, you want us in the coalition? We want you to extend the exemptions that you give. We don't want a few hundred. We want more. And the condition was that as long as what this guy is doing, he's only studying the scriptures in this institution, then they don't have to go to the army. If he does, if he wants to work as a butcher, no, he'll have to go to the army. But if he wants to stage as a religious student, he can, he's exempt. And with the years, the number extended to several tens of thousands. Now, the result of that, that they, this had significant socio-economical results because now these people cannot leave the religious institution because if they start officially working, they're no longer exempt from the service, right? Because the condition was that they will have to be in this institution. Wait, so the, there's no like period that after that you could stop pretending? You always, you have, uh, your content, uh, they could send you uh, back? Unless, to the, well, once yeah. you get married, they don't call you because you're married. So I guess if you get married, you then, then you're exempt again because so, you're married. So there already. are people that are pre reading religious texts, pretending to be religious until they get married so that they don't have to serve. That's really fun. Well, I don't think they pretend to be religious. I think they're really religious, but yeah. the arrangement is such that if yeah. they dare go to the job market... Oh, so this is bad married, for the economy because they're doing useless shit instead of actually contributing, doing yes, some... Yes, and not only that they're doing useless shit, because uh, the thing is that because the See, ultra this is how religion policy. fucks with everything, you know, in the, in, the, in the most subtle ways, as soon as, it, you know, like the, in ways that you can't even like, you don't even expect, as soon as you get religion mixed with something, things are falling apart. But go on, sorry. But that's no, we're not finished. You, yeah. you think we're finished. We're no. just beginning. <laughs> okay. Then the ultra orthodox, what the ultra orthodox did was they say, OK, these guys, uh, because they had political power and because in Israeli politics, you have the re left wing and the right wing, and then you have the, these, these small parties that can, can tilt the scale for the coalition. And these small parties were mo normally they were the ultra orthodox parties. So they came, and to each to each coalition they went into said, okay, you want us in the coalition? We need bud we need budgets to support those uh, guys who study in those institutions, so they can have a living. They can you know they can provide themselves. So they also got money just to pay them to, to remain and study there. Government so they, money? Like taxpayer money? Yeah, government money. Oh, it's like shit. taxpayers' money is what? funding their lives there. So they don't live like kings, don't get me wrong. It's not mm. like they're... Uh, they they're shouldn't not live, they shouldn't get any money. Like, they're I, not doing anything. I know. Oh, so that, that, is a, that is a lot, a source of great hostility in the non-Orthodox uh, public in Israel towards the ultra orthodox community. And it's getting worse or better? Like, is it getting more secular I, or more I, religious? Well, it, it changes between coalition, one coalition and another, but the, the general, general direction yeah. is that I think it's getting worse. Oh, now, on top, of, on top of that, and now I'm going to talk a bit about educa the education system in Israel in a religious context. Mm. In the Jewish uh, education system, because you have the Arabic-speaking one, which is a different story, but, but the Hebrew-speaking one, you have three major uh, streams, three major avenues. You have the state non-religious uh, education system, which is supposed to be just state curriculum with no added religious curriculum. Mm -hmm. Then you have the state religious curriculum, which is supposed to be state curriculum and additional religious content in it. And then you have the independent ultra-Orthodox uh, uh, part, which is independent in its content completely, but still gets funded by, uh, by the government. So that's another part of the status quo. They came and said, we want our, our education system to be independent of your Oof. curriculum. The and, result of which... The and they got it? That, and they got it? They got it. Oh, shit. Now, the, re, now the result of it is that the rabbis, the, not the, their leaders, practically make their people totally dependent on the community because mm. the, when you go, as a kid, when you go to their education system, you don't get the skills that you need to function in the outside world. And that's by design. Then you go, so you, that's then by you design. go to the institute. Sorry? That's by then design. You go, so you always need them. Yes, and then you turn 18, mm -hmm. and do you want to go to the army? No, you don't want to go to the army. So you have to enter the, the higher uh, religious, higher scholar institution, the yeshiva, mm -hmm. the, the higher scholar institution. 
Yeah, if you leave, if you're gonna leave that, you have no skills in the outside world, and they'll take you to the army, right? So you're gonna stay there as well. And this way, the whole community is dependent on itself, uh, separated it's like a from the outside. Like growing in the country. Yeah. It's now on top, on top of that, the uh, one thing that the ultra orthodox parties were good at was to make sure that the welfare system is such that it rewards you for having more kids. So. So if you have, if you have, you get more money for the, for every extra kid, you don't get money for your first kid, you get money from social security for your second, mm -hmm. you get even more for your third, you get even more for your fourth. So they created a system which is very poor, their society is very poor, always, always poor, always ignorant, and dependent on them. Right. So, so that's the most, that's one of the most successful cults in the world. And, and when people think about Orthodox Jews, they always think about these people with the funny hats and the curly hairs um, yeah. and the people that spit on women or little girls that don't have the, the most extreme. I don't think the, I don't the, think all of them. Look, first of all, the ultra, the ultra Orthodox Jews of today were not what they were a uh, hundred years ago. My great grandfather was an ultra Orthodox Jew and he went to Israel and he bought a farm and he was a farmer and he worked with his hand all his life. Right. And, and, and when his kids at the age of 13, because in, in Judaism, when you turn 13, then you become a respon responsible for your own sins. When, it, when his kids at the age of, age of 13 chose to be secular, he said, okay, you're 13 now, you're not my responsibility, do whatever you want. So that was then. Nowadays, because of the socio-economical processes that I described, they're far less open. They don't want their people to have much exposure to the secular world. Hmm. So, yes. So, but, and so, but, yeah. but, so, but, the people, the those people that are extreme, extreme, like the people that have their own areas and they don't yes. want any technology and uh, they the, want the technology, but they don't want no, to be exposed to the ideas. No, the but technology. But, they, they're happy to drive a car. They right. just don't want your son to go and study in the uni. Right. Oh, no secular books, no science, no, that kind of people. Creationists, world six years, uh, you know, 6,000 year old kind of people. But I'm just saying that those are not the only religious people that are, no. that are making Israel more religious. Uh, no, though, like, you, have, you have the Zionist religious people. These are the people right. that are, that you, you, you'd usually probably identify them with, with settlers that you see on the TV, but they're not, not all of them are settlers and not all of the settlers are religious. But uh, these are the ones that uh, uh, that are not, you know, they would dress more modernly. They have less problem with modernity and science. But they're so still very they're religious not, and they want to make it religi more They consider themselves just as religious as the ultra-Orthodox. The ultra-Orthodox mm. look at them and say, oh, you guys are fake. But they, they would consider themselves as, as religious just the same. But uh, that, those but are the example, most dangerous. They, they are more dangerous, right? Because those are the people with the influence and the connections and the people that are, have a very a religious agenda that are trying to drive the politics and the rest of the country into a more well, religious it, direction, right? Some of them, look, some of these guys are actually left wing, but those of them who are in the right wing, I, cons I personally consider the right wing bits of them uh, dangerous because they have a lot of influence in the politics. And I cons personally... I think they're dragging the country to fulfill their messianic dreams Oof. on the expense of people that don't share them. Now, at least one of them, Benny Katzover, is one of their leaders, was very clear about it. He, he didn't even bother to hide it. That He considered democracy as a tool, obsolete. He, he, didn't, he doesn't care. You know, their, their ambition is not for Israel to be a democracy. They want Israel to be a religious state, one, and one day the Messiah will come. Actually, that and reminds they, me of a question that I think I missed in the live chat. Uh, it was a really good question about the relationship between these people and the religious right, a Christian religious. Uh, ah, yeah, very uh, good question. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I saw the two. I, I yeah. now what from my bet the okay. So here comes the you. I as an Israeli, everyone who wants to support Israel and and make it safer in in the dangerous neighborhood where it is. I'm not going to be very picky, you know. If someone comes to me and says, "Look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure that uh, you get uh, more support at the international arena," I say, "Look, I don't care who you worship, I don't care who you believe. I, if you want to support my country in its struggles, I'm happy with that." I do acknowledge that the Christian right, uh, in pro mostly probably in the United States, I actually believe that the new Brazilian president is also an evangelist. I'm not sure, but I think he's also has an evangelist background. 
Uh, I think they they support they support Israel because they think they know the the divine plan and they think one day there will be Armageddon. Mm. And once Armageddon happens, then Jesus is going to come, and then everyone's going to be Christian anyway. And that, so, so you have the religious, so you have the religious right wing in Israel, the Jews, that don't think anything special about Jesus. And you have the you have the evangelist in the U.S. that looks at the religious Jews and says, "Oh, those are the guys who rejected Jesus." And each of them thinks that the other one is helping them fulfill their divine plan. So they, uh, they, use, they think they're using each other. They're like, yeah, exactly. Each right. of them thinks, "Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use them to fulfill right. my def- the plan that God has for me." Right. <laughs> and uh, but but they're helping each other. Uh, right. They're helping each other. Now I have to tell you, they, as an Israeli, of course, I'm not happy. With, I personally, as a left wing Israeli, I'm not happy with Israel presence in the West Bank as it is. I can see why Israelis are afraid of withdrawing for security reasons, but I'm not happy as it is. But if an evangelist comes to me and say, I'm going to support your country, and his, the support that he offers, I think, is good for my country, I'm not going to be fussy about it. I'm going to be very happy that my country has allies. Countries have all, always have allies that they're not always very happy with. But That's don't the you, nature of uh, some allies could be more costly than helpful, yes. no? Because some yes. allies so, could get you more, could you, you could get, gain one ally and invite 10 enemies because of having that ally, no? Yes, but having having grown in the Middle East yourself, I think you I think you we can both agree that the Israel's enemies in the Middle East will remain no matter no matter what. Even I don't even know uh, because <laughs> it, when the the only way that Israel will stop having enemies is when you identify a greater threat to the Arabs than Israel. Yes, and yes. who is a greater which threat now? Which is happening now? Happening now, which is Iran. Yes. Right. So suddenly the so, Saudis, yep. just so you'll understand, just the, the, uh, people who don't know the Middle Eastern history, uh, about, if we go back about 80 years ago, you had two major rival dynasties, the Hashemites and the Saudis. The Hashemites were more tolerant towards the Zionists than the Saudis, and the Saudis were the most extreme ones against. Now suddenly there is a honeymoon in the, in the horizon, and the Saudis, the Wahhabis, uh, suddenly are not so don't have that much of a problem with Israeli presence. Oh, they and, need, uh, they, they are begging them to do yes. something about the Iran. They, they are buddy no, no, buddies. But they play f- I'm not, of course, of, officially, really popular, officially, officially suddenly, yeah. suddenly, suddenly you see on Kuwaiti TV, on Saudi TV, you see scholars that say good things about Israel. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and that, you know, you know, the reality of the region, they wouldn't have been able to say that if the government wouldn't, wouldn't approve of it. No, of course. So, no, the, 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 yeah. yeah it, it, the, and actually, the threat of the Shia Islam and Iran as a whole is so uh, f- so great to Sunni Arab countries that they they will they will they will unite with the devil if they had to. Uh, yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. So uh, now I can. Th- uh, so that's uh, and so thank God. I mean, if we go back to theology, thank God for the schism in Islam. That, uh, that helps the. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, helps. and there's so many people. There's so many, so many dead people. I wouldn't say. Actually, actually, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you a little, a little secret. Hmm. Uh, I was invited to a closed group when, when the civil war in Syria began, and it was not very clear that the Shiites are the strong one. Someone invited me to a secret Facebook group that is called Israeli Shia Alliance. So, so there were right. Shiites out there about seven years ago or six years ago that tried to to form some kind of a, some kind of a shia israeli common interest and uh, that, that's that's not that much of a novelty because in the, in lebanon during the civil war in the 70s the shiites of south lebanon were quite quite happy with israel coming in well, uh, it's only later when iran got in with hezbollah that it turned but the shiites in the in eighty two, when the Israeli forces entered Lebanon, there were Shiite women standing in the streets throwing rice and perfume on them. So I mean, so it's, it's, not... it's the other way around now. I mean, Iran used to be a safe haven for, of like many years ago for Jews, but now it's the oh, other yeah. way around. I mean, and the ethno nationalists right now in Iran are actually saying that uh, Iran is the the only force against Israel. And they say like all this Islamophobia claims by the West is fake because the West has no problem with uh, Islam 
the West only has a problem with Shia Islam because all the Sunni Islamic countries are the pup now the puppets of the West. Um, and the problem that the West has with Shia Islam is technically is actually the problems with Iran. Um, so they think and the reason why everybody has a problem with Iran is because they are the only true force against the great devil, which is the which is Israel. So, oh, so Israel is the great devil now. OK. No, they we, no. We they, they think they think they've this, been promoted they, because Israel used to be the small devil. No, it has now, been promoted. Now, it has been actually promoted more than what you think because it used to be that Zionism was an evil because of what's happening in Israel, but now apparently there's two versions of Zionism: the 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 baby Zionist movement and the major Zionist movement. The baby Zionist movement is just about making Israel a country for Jews. But the actual yeah. major Zionist movement is to take over the whole fucking planet. <laughs> oh, okay. so, Look, that, that, this is so old that it's boring already. I, I mean, know, it, I know, but no, <laughs> it's, it is, it is, old, no, it is old. But what is new is to me is that people are making, to me at least, I know this is old as yeah. forever. But to what's new is that it's coming from non-Islamic sources now. Yes, in Iran. Yeah. Like non-Islamic, yes. ethno-nationalist, Zoroastrian sources, which claim Wait. that Shia Islam is actually a fake Islam, is actually a Zoroastrianism, self mode of Zoroastrianism. It's just for a way for the Zoroast for Iran not to become fully Islamic. It was a resistance to the true Islam, okay. which is Sunni Islam. Yeah, uh, but Ali wasn't even Zoroastrian. He was. They saying even, like uh, the story of. No, no, but they're saying that as the so if story of Ali was copied from uh, Persian uh, mythology, it's, they all, they have. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't okay, want to get into yeah. that. But they're just saying like Iran was invaded by Arabs, but the only way that it could survive and keep its own distinct identity was to have its own version of a, a Shia Islam. Which, if you look into deep looking to Shia Islam, you see a lot of elements of Zoroastrianism, and that shows that Iran was just basically trying to not become fully Islamized because it's in its DNA or something, some bullshit like that. Anyways, I don't. So that, we we can't even trust non-Muslim Iranians now. That's that's a shame. Uh, don't as, as don't, Israelis. Yeah. don't just just look at individuals and see what they're. Yeah. I, I I don't trust people based on their. I don't decide whether I could trust somebody based on their country. Or no, no. Their, I, I'm of yeah. course. I mean, I'm being. Yeah. Being a yeah, bit, yeah, just, uh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. About... You don't have to be religious to say to to believe in nonsense. But yeah, that's what yeah, I say. yeah. But so so God. that's uh, okay. Now I, I have to touch. Uh, so we spoke about the status quo. We spoke about the religious uh, ultra orthodox. Uh, now the main now the main battleground that I've identified is also in the municipal elections. So a go good news in Israel was in the city of Tiberias. city of Tiberias on the Galilee Sea was, used to be a touristic city because it's on the lake. Right. And ultra-Orthodox uh, became more numerous there and got hold of, the, of politics and then started shutting down the city on the Sabbath, businesses, etc. But in the recent municipal elections, the secular people united, they, they elected, a sec uh, I don't know if it's fully secular, but it, it's definitely not ultra-Orthodox, a uh, mayor, and he's now uh, swinging the pendulum to the other side and opens the city on the Sabbath in a very clear uh, and blatant way to show that the city is now returning to what it used to be. So that's an example of this w trench warfare that goes on between secular and religious people in the public sphere. Mm -hmm. uh, I also encourage the viewers, I put some links for anti a anti-religious satire that happens in Israel. There's always people say, can you criticize Judaism without being anti-Semitic? Well, yes, you have heaps of, of secular Jews that criticize their religion and they're obviously they're not anti-Semitic. Right. So, <laughs> I, get, I get accused of being anti-Semitic all the time. I, 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 you know, now more than ever, because I think a lot of, a lot of the like social justice warrior PC uh, crowd have lost the battle of I think most now have lost the battle of making everybody that criticizes Islam as a bigot. I think that more and more people have realized that that's bullshit to say that. I mean, still, there's many people that still believe that. But I think the new frontier is now, if you shed on Judaism, you must be anti-Semitic. Uh, and I think I'm going to, I'm going to... Uh, 
I'm going to start shitting on Judaism more than ever before because if you want to, if you want, if you if you want to be sensitive about that. But I mean, you're right. I mean, what I point out when I shit on Judaism is that most Jewish people are more. That's tell me if this is right. And to me, to based on what I've seen, based on the study I've seen, uh, ethnically Jewish people are the least religious group of people that in the Middle East um, I mean yes, not in the world because so. like, because if you look at Japan that wouldn't be that they're even less religious but um, yes in but, the Middle East definitely yeah I mean the, I mean most Jewish people think this is bullshit and how I, I don't think I regret it I think today not most people think it's bullshit but for 40% of Israelis in a poll that I've seen uh, define themselves as secular and in another poll 20% said they don't believe in God 20% we're true. So not so, okay. So not what I'm saying. Not most. Most is not accurate. More on a percentage. More, more than it, most demographics. Yes. Right. Yes. So um, yes. And it's very and in Israel it's very safe if you unless you live in this ultra orthodox neighborhood. But generally it's very safe to come out as an atheist. It's no big deal about it because people in atheist republic you have a lot of stories. People say oh, how I came out as an atheist and in my community. So even even in the West, let's say I know. I think in the southern of the United States, some places. In Israel, I grew up in a village yeah. of only 300 people. We have atheists in that village. We had an ultra-Orthodox rabbi in the village. We had and everything in between. So, yeah. and it was no big deal about it. Uh, there is a lot of uh, a lot of uh, atheist culture and secular counterculture in Israel, and I encourage the viewers to see in the description. I put some links to to secular satire, so you will see. Mm. The degree of criticism that Jews themselves in Israel have uh, towards the religion. Uh, yes. Right. I oh. think it's mostly just like when it comes to the Islam, the invention of the term Islamophobia. It was mostly non-Muslims that I mean, Muslims eventually learned the term and started using it. But it was non-Muslims trying to defend people, uh, try to become the guardian of some people. And I think this whole being labeling people as anti-Semitic because they're sh shitting on Judaism is mostly it's done by non-Jewish people as well. I'll, uh, I'll tell you when I do suspect someone is anti-Semitic. Someone can come, I think I, I told you that before we, before we had the live chat. Someone can come with criticism about Israel, which I think is valid. No, but no, when no Israel, see... but okay, so that's a separate argument. Let, let, let's transition to that. So I yeah. think anybody, I don't think people have yet learned to shed on Judaism because they're anti-Semitic. I think they might start learning that because like they try to just like a lot of people that are actually really anti-Muslim bigot, they they use the anti I mean most anti-Islam views to hide that, but that doesn't mean that everybody that speaks against Islam is bigot, but some people just jump on that bandwagon. But I think most people that are criticizing Judaism looking at the Old Testament and be like, "Well, this is fucking bullshit. This is barbaric." Um it's, that hasn't been used as by anti-Semitic. Oh, actually, yeah, never mind. It has a lot. They, they, you have yeah. anti-Semites that, that use that as well. But yeah, yeah, yeah. We can get into that because I think I, that's that's a very uh, that's a clear indication of anti-Semitism because they think every Jew today, even religious, they do those barbaric things. That's not yeah, true. Yeah, they but, think that the secular ones are believing that they're just hiding it. Actually, you're right. Actually, I've met I met Nazis. They think like they 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 do look at. Uh, they bring up a lot of the text. Actually, I changed my opinion. They do bring up the text. Like, look at the fuck the the stuff that de the demonic shit that these people believe in. So yeah, so maybe some people are actually real anti semites when they're criticized. But but the, but the other point that you were bringing up is that it's okay yeah. to shit on Israel policies, but some people that um are actual there are some people that are actually anti semitic, I but they're trying to yeah. hide under criticism of Israel. Exactly. But, okay. So I, I suspect, look, first of all, if someone brings an argument about Israel to me, I don't care, even if I think they're anti-Semitic, I'll answer the argument because I don't care if it's, if he's uh, anti-Semitic, I can only hope for him to recover from his, from his condition. You know, it's not much I can do, but uh, uh, I would answer the argument. But I personally would suspect someone is anti-Semitic when they criticize Israel on some moral grounds but neglect other cases with the same moral ground. So if someone is starting telling me, oh, the occupation of the West Bank is wrong, blah, 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 but he's keeping silent about the Turkish occupation of Cyprus, of Northern Cyprus, then I say, okay, hang on. If you're really bothered with occupation, how come I never saw you demonstrating against Turkey or, uh, of, or suggesting a, a boycott against Turkey 
Or how come I never heard you say anything about the Arab occupation of North Africa? You have indigenous non-Arab people in North Africa oppressed today. I never see you march for them. So then I start suspecting that your obsession with Israel is not about justice, but, but, but with the fact that it has something special. And what's that special thing? It's a Jewish country, unlike other countries. So then this is when I start suspecting that the person is being anti-Semitic. If he's silent about other issues and he's obsessed with Israel, if you look at the, at the death toll of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, since it began, let's say 100 years ago, it's not the most lethal conflict in the world. It's not the second most. It's probably the 10th most, maybe not even there. So there is no objective reason for people to be obsessed with this particular conflict or situation, unless they're either Palestinians or, Jew, or Jews. Yes, but if they're not, their obsession has to, differ, has to be from ulterior motive. And they, this is when I start suspecting that the person who is critical of Israel and just, you know, and the occupation and the injustice is actually not, not really caring about justice. He's actually obsessed with Jews. Actually, this is, or, we're seeing yeah. some examples of that in the live chat. And BJ and Christy, you guys are removing some, some of these views because they're pretty uh, out there. But I, I was wondering if, B, because the B, BJ and uh, Christy are the Mars in the live chat, I was wondering maybe we should leave them on because I want it so that we see what we're dealing with. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I would hope. I, I don't like censorship at all. I'd like to see everything there. Yeah, I mean, I, I, if somebody is spamming, remove them. But it, it, even if it's anti-Semitic, let us see what we're dealing with here. So let let them, unless they started spamming it so much that it just makes it everything. Uh, oh, no, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. it's trolling. Yeah, I think they're removing it because they, I, I, it, I don't know if it's trolling, guys. Let let us see what they're saying. Unless they they message so much that they take the entire live chat. I think yeah, I, I saw I some... Don't... I, some of the messages above was about, uh, I saw in the live stream, people are saying that it was 9-11 was done by the Jewish people, I think. But I, yeah, I been, uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's, Look, uh, I have, a, I have I, a personal friend. I have a personal friend that thinks that. I'm sure he's not anti-Semitic, but he really thinks that as well. And yes. then you have to try with, you know, conspiracy theorists, they have this tactic. They throw little bits of so-called fact, oh. and then you have to waste your time, hours, to find and show them why this little fact they said is actually doesn't indicate anything. I, I, I have little time for them, but I, I can entertain them in, in the chats, you know, if they want to. Yeah, actually, they, apparently they all showed up at the same time. That's why I think BJ and Christy are being overwhelmed, because they're saying uh, Holocaust is a lie. There's a whole okay. bunch of stuff happening. I think they're taking over the live chat. Uh, they're putting the whole, like, uh, and it's interesting. It's, um, yeah, and Christy is saying uh, she has experience dealing with it. But I'm missing, a, I miss because of all this stuff, I missed a whole bunch of other questions above. Oh, yeah, go Theo Mikey. Okay, Theo Mikey, is, thank you for posting it again. Theo Mikey is saying, I had a question. Is there a, th a threat from religious Jews wanting to replace secular law in Israel with religious law from the yes. Torah? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, there is. They don't go and say we we want now to replace the religious law, but uh, they don't. They, at the same time, they don't make a secret out of the fact that uh, they would be happy to have a halacha state. Some of them, not all of them, again, but uh, but definitely there is a threat. Uh, and as I said before, one of them, Benny Katzover, was very clear saying that democracy, that he he doesn't approve of democracy that much. Great. Uh, Man, you have to see the live chat. It's been taken over yeah. by people. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying, I, 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 I consider did, it entertainment. It says, it says Jews did 9-11 and killed JFK. Truth is anti-Semitic. The uh, truth yeah. is, oh my God, holy shit. Where yeah, did you, yeah. Okay, where all is, you guys, yeah. all you guys there that think uh, Jews conspire and rule the world, I got your addresses and we're going to get to you very soon. Yeah, uh, I mean, I mean, if <laughs> if Jews are taking over the world, well, you guys are fucked, and you, there's nothing. Yeah, to that's do. it. I mean, you, you're gone. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna call the Zionist <laughs> elders of Zion uh, just as we finish this, and they're gonna get to you. Uh, uh, B is uh, saying, let us know what uh, what you want to do. Um, I think B uh, let okay, them. Yeah. Yeah, I think you agree with me. Let them stay because I want people to see what what yeah. kind of a cancer we are dealing with here, right? Um, so someone asked me there, uh, I, I already don't see the name because it popped up. Do I consider Israel an ethno state? I consider Israel as a nation state of the Jewish people. That's that's the way I would see it, just uh, for terminology. Okay. You, uh, Armin, you wanted to ask me stuff about gay rights. And, yeah, so uh, let me give you a list of stuff that um, 
then we could go through them one by one, right? So, for example, the the at the the Wailing Wall where people go pray, women are not allowed to pray there. I think a lot of women rights activists. Oh no, 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 no! You got the facts wrong. W okay. uh, the Wailing Wall uh, has separation. You have you have a part of it is for women and part of it is for men, and there is a barrier in the middle. I think. The problem was that they were not allowed to. What did they want to do? I think they want to come with a with a Torah book there and uh, and uh, read the Torah or something of that sort. I don't remember exactly what was the problem with the, with the women in the Wailing Wall. They women can definitely come to the Wailing Wall and personally play pray, but there was something a bit more blatant that they did, and then the Orthodox rabbis uh, who are in charge of the place didn't accept. And I don't remember the exact. I don't remember the exact. There's nuance there. Um, okay, but that, but, but whatever discrimination exists, uh, it's good that people are fighting it, right? Um, uh, so actually, between be, my my comment on the Wailing Wall is because I personally consider the Wailing Wall as a just as a historical artifact. This argument between the two groups of of superstition believers bores me. You know, I, if the women want to pray there, they the one way, and the men don't want them. For me. It's like an argument of two people playing Dungeons and Dragons or something and arguing which which piece in the yeah, is but, cooler in the game. But I, I don't know. I, I support even if it's if it's all b bullshit. The fact that it's bullshit for only men, some men to play. I'm 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 glad that people are fighting with for for that because it exposes how sexist the, the religion is oh yeah no yeah. De definitely but i i see but for me it's very ironic for a for a orthodox jewish woman to complain about being mistreated as a woman uh, when every morning she knows that her husband is praying and saying blessed he who did not create me as a woman right right and she says every morning right. so in what she says every morning right. she says blessed he who created me as he wanted so they, it's not like it's balanced. Yes. So so, I, so then so after when you grow up since child since childhood that way, how are you surprised that you are being mistreated as a woman? It's for me it's I, it's ironic. But yes, I certainly I support the right to to pray there as they want, just the same. Uh, let me clarify something. In the left chat, one person say we come with facts and you dismiss us as cancer. You are cancer. I wasn't. I wasn't calling you personally as a cancer. I was just. Uh, this, uh, I was talking about your views as cancer. Just to be clear, I wasn't. Uh, even. Even. You know. No. I when I when I said I hope you'd recover from your condition, I meant anti-Semitism, not the cancer or anything like that. Yeah. No. no so, but no. Yeah. I I have no problem call, calling certain ideas cancer. I call Islam yeah. cancer all the time. Um, I'm not. I'm not talking about a certain group of people. I'm talking about certain views. But it's someone really... here says Jews. Someone here said Jews are gays. Do you think that's an insult? I don't get that. Yeah, yeah. you have gay people in the world. <laughs> it's... Okay. Am, um, am I supposed to be insulted now because because you call me gay? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so so what about, you know the incident with Intel where the I don't know that live chat is so amusing right now. I don't know if I should. Yeah, I know, I know. It, I, I'm used to it, but I can see how you can still yes. find it amusing. I, I'm I'm already used to it, so yeah. So it doesn't track me up just as much. No, no, it doesn't. Yeah. But, uh, okay, but Twig, for the people, sorry, sorry. for, for Twig, the people, is asking all kinds of very interesting questions. So I'll just note that you asked me about Chabad. Remind me later, Armin. Ask your question then. But Chabad? remind me about Chabad. Okay, Chabad. Okay, so so the the the, the, the Sabbath, the days that the and you remember that when the Intel was open on holidays and there was a huge, huge bunch of protests by people that why is it open on holy day? Why are they not holding Sabbath? Is that a big deal? Like all. Are do all private companies are forced to not people are uh, not work during the holidays? Officially speaking, I think the the letter of the law is that yes, you're not supposed to well, operate unless in a Jewish community. But let's say if you if you live in an Arab village and you open your business in Sabbath, no one would care because you're not Jewish. Yeah. But uh, but yes, I think you're not supposed to employ people on Sabbath unless there are certain there are certain exceptions. So some. Some uh, let's say restaurants or cinemas they can operate, but but I think the law otherwise would give you trouble if you open on the Sabbath. So, yes. So what what are the what are the secular Jews in Israel, secular people in general in Israel doing to fight against this bullshit? Like it seems like they're losing. Like uh, uh, yeah. So so the reason well so they're doing certain things. For example, I gave the the example of Tiberius. Uh, 
in, in the level of local politics, because the municipalities, uh, you know, they know their people, they know their constituency, if practically speaking, they would not enforce some of the Sabbath bylaws. Uh, the city of Haifa, for example, had a very idealistic mayor from, from independence, Abba Hushi, and he made sure that in Haifa there will be public transportation on the Sabbath, for example, because that's the way it used to be before. Uh, so uh, secular Jews either ignore some of the regulations that uh, they know they're not going to be enforced. Uh, sometimes they go demonstrate, let's say, if there is a plan to to block another road on the Sabbath, even to private cars, because uh, the, the religious people in the neighborhood want it blocked. They would go to the courts and try and appeal against it. Uh, they would go demonstrating. Another thing that uh, secular people are doing, uh, so I mentioned the secular forum. Oh, so you're talking about the Sabbath, sorry. Uh, so when it comes to the Sabbath, it's either demonstrations in the street, appeals to the courts, or political pressure if they can at the local level. Uh, that's uh, the, the tragedy of Israeli politics is that because it has so many other more dire problems, people would might vote to a, to a prime minister that would accommodate the ultra-religious people because they think he will manage better other issues that are more important to them. So let's say people who think it would be a, a security disaster to withdraw from the West Bank might still vote for a right-wing government that would accommodate the ultra-Orthodox more because they say, okay, we'll deal with the we'll deal with the religion later. Just make sure that the country will be safe. So uh, at the state level, uh, it, they're not uh, they're not very active. At the local municipal level, at the judicial level, they try and do as much as they can to to fight the you know the encroachment of the but Sabbath what, population. But why are they losing so much? But what can we do to like what can it be done? Like, is are you hopeful? Are you or not? Uh, I, it's hard to say. I, right now, I'm not very hopeful because uh. right now I'm not very hopeful because right now the country is turning the, the society. I feel that the Jewish society in Israel is turning more right wing. No. And this means the right wing will be in power and the right wing tends to accommodate the ultra the, the religious demands more. See? So uh, and I also and it's hard for me to say because I don't live in Israel now. I don't know whether society is turning even more religious, but there are hints that it is also turning more religious. Uh, so I'm not very hopeful at the moment, but I but I do count on the sen Jude the Jewish culture culture has a strong element of self criticism and self debate. Mm. So I do put my hope in uh, in this uh, element of the Jewish culture. And hopefully one day the pendulum is going to swing back to the other side. So just so you'll understand, when, when the country was established or where my parents were youth, the religious people were the were a minority that was very even peculiar. So the the the, the culture was very secular. the 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 cultural elite was very secular. Uh, it it's turned more and more religious with with the years. Um, so yeah. I think part of the problem is also the fact that this whole don't criticize Israel, you're anti-Semitic, because then it's really hard to get of the global secular community against your religious dogma, uh, dogma when any attack on policies is seen as an attack on the entire nation or an attack on uh, the Jews as, 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 as an ethnicity. Uh, so it's, it's hard to find global allies when, when people f think like that, right? And, and I think a lot of people, a lot of atheists, uh, in, you know, when they went, instead of joining the fight against the, the religion growing in Israel, uh, instead of focusing on that, they, they constantly point to how much things are better in Israel compared to Islamic countries. And it seems like the, that content makes makes them not really fight for the, the increasing influence of religion because they have such with, a low with, standard. Yeah, go on. Uh, you're talking about outside atheists, not yeah, atheists like, in Israel. Because you, I think, like, uh, yeah, for support of, you know, I, I see it as the atheist community as a global movement and we all shine a light on how how religion is fucking up our, our things around us and by bringing out international attention 
Like, for example, in Iran, they keep recording people, mullahs that are being harassing women for their bad hijab, and that international pressure keeps putting pressure on the country as a whole, right? So this this whole, the secular secular people around the world, I think, like need to have each other's back and bring attention to this. But I think Israel doesn't get the, deser- the, inf- the increasing influence of religion in, in Israel. It's not getting the attention it deserves because a lot of one, for two reasons. One, because people are afraid of being anti-Semitic. And two, because people were like, well, look at its neighbors. It's much better. Like, at least they're not beheading people. At least they have a gay pride parade. Tell me what other Muslim countries have gay pride parades. I mean, they had, I guess, but they canceled. The Lebanon had once. Actually, in Saudi Arabia, you can be a man to woman trans. Did you know that? In Iran. In Saudi you Arabia. Iran. You... In Iran as well. Sorry? In Iran. Yeah. But you, that's, I think that's a pat- patriarchy thing, but we'll, that n- you mean nothing to do with Israel. Uh, Saudi Arabia, or you're talking, like, tr- like in Iran, y- if you want to have sex with your own gender, uh, you have to b- do a transgender operation, even though yeah. if you're not trans. Like, it's weird. Anyways, but... Yeah. but no, now, but, b- back to Israel. I think, I think the thing is with Israel, there are two angles here. Outside, I think, outside the uh, atheist my, or critics of religion... Hmm. Uh, I think many of them think that Israel is not the major problem at the moment. Also, I think their criticism of the Jewish religion is not that well educated. So it's, so it's hard for a Jewish atheist to join forces with them because they don't really understand what Talmud is. They don't understand how Jewish theology, theology currently is dealing with problematic texts. But Jewish atheists in, or Israeli atheists, I don't think they feel they need any international support. I think they they feel quite competent. They, the thing is, even I, before I spoke to you, I said, I wonder what of, how much of what I say will then be used just to vilify Israel entirely by some people. It's, it's something that we consider because there are people out there that, that are just in the business of vilifying Israel. Uh, so you're very careful not to criticize the country that you basically love and that you, you know, you've served, you've lived there. Uh, because you don't know what of what you say could be taken out of con- context just to vilify the country as a whole. Uh, and then, uh, you know, someone, someone uh, two weeks from now can say, look, Israel is very bad. It's doing this in Gaza. It's doing this there, there. And even there was this Zionist guy called Yuval, and he even pointed out that they're doing that as well. So I don't want to contribute to that. I'm very reluctant to contribute. So I guess that's one of the reasons that why Israeli atheists but isn't are, that, isn't don't, that, don't seek international support in their particular struggle. And isn't that kind of like a bigotry of lower expectations? Kind of like, yeah, we criticize it everywhere, but since it's happening, we can't, we can't, we can't handle criticism of like, I don't know. It seems like not fair. I think no. it's just tiptoeing around people's sensitive, you know, sensitive nature about like something else. I mean, you should. I think it, it would be. I think it would actually help um, show that look, we are criticizing these things as well, because a, a lot of people, a lot of people might use that as a way to show that you know, even you know, you you guys, you guys are too sensitive about even criticizing your policy. I think I think if you if people are openly more self-critical, it demonstrates how openly. Um, how open they are to change and progress. And oh, I, yeah. I don't think uh, I don't think Israeli atheists or secular people are hiding their criticism. And in the links that I've put in the description, you'd see they come with English subtitles, so yeah, but, everyone but, but, can read them. The links that you mentioned, if, uh, it's not of yet the on Facebook. Fa- yes, yeah, so it's on YouTube and our description. I will, once the live chat is over, I copy and paste it on Facebook as well. Facebook doesn't let us pr- add the description before we go live. But oh, right okay. now, right now it's on YouTube. It's not on Facebook. But I'll add it on but Facebook. Going, later. We're going yeah. to add it. But you'll yeah. see, uh, we, Israeli secular people they they don't make a secret out of their criticism, but they would not seek active support the way, let's say, atheist Muslims do, and they do need more support. Obviously, atheist Muslims would, would do need more support than atheist Jews. Atheist Jews are very competent in standing tall and express their opinions in Israel. Like they don't... Well, they're not, they're not... We're not winning right now. They're losing. So they need international support. But what... I, I'm trying to think how would that international support be uh, look like? What what exactly do you think but, is going to happen? Well, because a lot of... Uh, by international support, I'm not talking about political support. I'm talking about activists, average people bringing attention 
to you know to to nonsense, right? I think the embarrassment yes. um, does put into does put pressure on a country to change, right? A lot of times, something is a bigger big deal in in a country, and they know that this is a problem. But once it goes mainstream everywhere. Then people in the country are like, okay, we need to do something about this. This is fucking embarrassing, right? Like because every every the, every country wants to have a good international image. So once the activists in the in the, in the country, whether it's in Iran, Israel, Pakistan, show the whole world like, look what the fuck we have to deal with, and becomes an embarrassment, then people the officials were like, okay, this is not very good for our image. We don't. We need to do a PR correction here. And okay. it, it is an influence. It, it, it works. I mean, if it works on Saudi fucking Arabia, that they, they like that seems to not give a shit about anything when it comes to international image. We see that actually sometimes they get pressured so much that even they have to change. It work. It should work on every country. By the way, we got a yeah. super uh, chat uh, by uh, Sister Shiksa. Sister Shiksa. Yeah, I wanted to relate to that. So be, I answer your Thank question you. in a minute. Si Sister Shiksa, she asks me how. Do, why do you support Israel if you're an atheist? Right, is that she, that was the question. Yeah. I first of all, I'd recommend you to go back to the video because I referred to it before. How can you be an atheist and a Jew, and the national aspect? So please go back to the video to the beginning. If you still don't find the answer, contact me on Facebook on Atheist Republic, and I will answer more answer the question uh, in greater detail. Now to what you said about in, about external pressure. Well, because, where can where can she find you? Like uh, on Facebook, on Atheist Republic on Facebook, just my name is there. So just put yeah. a comment on our video there and I will comment back to you. Okay. Thank, uh, you. But, Thank you for the yeah, super chat. Good. All right. Uh, now, uh, to your question, because of the history of Judaism and the Jewish culture, external pressure is not as effective on, on Jewish societies as it is in other, in, on other societies. Jews were vulnerable and exposed to external pressure for thousands of years. Whatever you're going to exercise now is peanuts for them. It, it's, it's with no comparison to what they've been through. And they, they have very good, the Jewish society has very good mechanisms to deal with theoretical, ideological external pressure. It's not going to, it's going to, it's not going to change much. The only thing it's going to do is it's going to make the right wing or the ultra religious point out the atheists and say, look at these treacherous, you know, treacherous lefties that go again overseas and uh, smear our name or something, uh, which, of course, I'm not going to take seriously as well. But it's not I don't think it's going to have any external any influence. I mean, people are more than welcome to criticize in Israel on the religious grounds. I don't care. Israel is very open to criticism and can cope with it. Uh, uh, so, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm reading uh, Shister Shiksa again, so it distracts me. So Israel is, will, be, will cope with this criticism, it will answer it uh, one way or another. I don't think external criticism will have any effect on the role of religion within Israel. Maybe it will embarrass some people, maybe some people say, okay, this is a bit embarrassing, you know, and, and we'll start being apologetic. But the main struggle should happen in Israel by Israeli atheists and secular people. And I can only hope they're gonna, you know, we're well, gonna win. Well, I think I, I think people shouldn't just uh, only look for of change from within. I think people globally could sh can and should rely on each other. By the way, I really do think that we should t t read some of this nonsense that we're seeing in the live <laughs> chat. Do you want to? Like I, I like the one that is uh, Israel is ISIS or something. So uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks. I'm gonna behead you after the the video. Just be aware of it. Be careful. Uh, YouTube YouTube might not know. What oh, sorry. You, that yeah. was a joke. YouTube. I'm going no, to. I'm going to. I know. I'm not going to. Sorry. No, YouTube is an algor Sometimes it's algorithms. It's algorithm. Crazy no, thing. no. Yeah. I didn't say that. That was my accent. I I meant something else. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. I am an What's atheist, that? and you don't know the meaning. Who are you, uh, which? Who are you referring to? Um, thank you. Sorry, for so Sister Shiksa, I think you've asked me how can I be an atheist and support Israel. I think that was your first question, wasn't it? Yeah, but let, was, was, let me scroll back. Let me scroll yeah, and back. Yeah, then she said that I'm an atheist. Yeah. You don't know the meaning. Is that is as an it? atheist? Why? Oh, as an as an atheist, why would you support Israel? Okay, so if you don't mind, Armin, I'm going to refer to that. So let's say you're an atheist and you look at the plight of the Kurdish people. You would you, you would still support them uh, because you you acknowledge they are they are uh, they have a collective identity. I, my argument is that Jews have a collective identity which is not only driven by their religion. And I gave before the example of the, of the Greek people. They don't have to worship Jews, uh, Zeus in order to be acknowledged as Greek. They are still a collective, a collective as such, 
And before they had their independence and they were oppressed by the Turks, people would still support them regardless of whether they worship Jews, uh, Zeus, or whether they were uh, Greek Orthodox. They acknowledged that they were a nation. My argument is that Jews are not only members or descendants of, of practitioners of a certain religion, but they, they're also, they have a collective uh, identity as a nation. And if you acknowledge the right of collectives to define themselves as such, you should acknowledge it for Jews just the same. I, I personally don't agree with that, but that's a different argument when it comes to identity yeah. and ethnicity. I don't really think ethnicity is a, is a good source of identity. I think ideas matter more than ethnic identity. I think me, um, and, and me and you have more in common based on ideas rather than anything that has, has got to do with our... Uh, ethnic, ethnic um, yeah. background or war or pr place of birth. I think so. So, so, so that's why I, I really don't see geography or DNA as a good source of identity. But go on. But I think so. so first of all, in my five-minute video on atheist republic uh, video reports, there was a person I forgot his name. I apologize, but he had we had a short and interesting discussion exactly about that. So you're welcome to read what I answered him there. But uh, I think. Uh, I think you have the the ought and the is. So the ought is that we all consider ourselves as as neutral human beings and relate to each other based on ideas only. The is is that we we most people do have a sense of a need for a, for a sense of identity, and they're also identified by their surroundings based on on an identity, and these needs are the ones that create naturally. I'm not saying Identities I'm not saying which, eth which which turned out to be ethnic, which mm -hmm. turned out turned out to be ethnic. But we have proven mostly. that it doesn't have to be. No, not mostly. I think that uh, I do. I do acknowledge that we need an identity. I mean, how could we not? But I do. I don't agree that that sense of identity has to do anything to should have anything to do with our ethnic background. I think your ideas tell me more way more like if you say I agree with this, I don't agree with this. This is the values that I aspire to. That tells me a lot more about who you are than if you tell me that you're Persian or you're uh, Arab or if you're uh, ethnically Jewish. That doesn't tell me much about me. And I could and I could see myself as with you or against you or neutral towards you more than more based on the values that you aspire, values that you have and the ideas that you agree with way more than any of those things that you ne you didn't even have a choice in. You didn't have a choice yes, where you were born. But you, you, didn't you didn't have a choice, but you didn't have a choice of brothers. And I would like, I think, that you feel closer oh, to your brothers, not, even though you don't agree with them. Actually, that's a very good example, because the reason why I, um, I feel closer to my brothers is because I grew up with them. If, if, if I found out that one of them was adopted now, I would not ever, I would not see them not as my brother. Yeah, the, yeah. The they would still be your brothers for yeah, you. So, uh, say, and, and, uh, if you day, and if one day somebody shows up and say that they're genetically my brother, I wouldn't yeah. feel closer closer to them at all just because I just found out that they're genetically my brother. So yeah. I think so that, ex that experience, so again, it has nothing to do with blood, nothing to do with DNA. Um, so I think, I think you are an exception. Of, of I think most human beings function differently uh, not because they were educated to. I think that Although I'm an atheist just like you, if someone knocks on my door and says, uh, you know, you, you may not know that, but I'm your long lost brother, uh, even if he's an ultra Orthodox Jew or a, or a jihadi or whatever, I would feel some affiliations to him, not because I think that's the right thing to do. But mm. because that's the way my psychology yeah, is that, built. But yeah, that and makes no sense. To me. <laughs> I, yeah. No, it's not, it, and it, it doesn't make sense because we're not, we're not totally rational creatures. Mm. We're creatures with needs that are not necessary. It's like it is as if I come to you and show you and show you on a table that uh, you know I come with statistics and I show you that that the love of your life, your wife, actually I can now show you with each and every measure that she falls behind someone else. That doesn't matter. You're still going to be in love with her and feel and feel close to her because it's not not everything in, in, in the world. I mean, I'm not suggesting that she is, by the way, Armin. I think she's great from what I've seen in the photos. But uh, <laughs> OK, but what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say is we're not rational creatures all the time. And ideally, and I'll put it in, in a different way. If we now make an experiment and somehow erase all ideologies and thoughts from people, and throw them in a, in a newly discovered continent, my prediction would be that in a matter of a few generations, they, they will form up in groups of 
two, three million people each, uh, approximately. Right. On uh, net, and it would just yeah, happen. The, I, it would be. It, yeah, of yes. course, it's so, part of our nature, but not everything that is natural is good, right? No, uh, that's right. But the right. thing is, so now we go back to the national idea. So you had this group of, let's say, 10 million people, let's say the Jews, and they had two options. They can either try and, and change the mentality of the remaining 2 billion at the time, or they can try and function within this mentality and find the nation state. These are the two options. Now, if I had a way of changing the mentality of, of the currently 7 billion people, I do it. I promise, you that, I promise you that I would, but I don't. So, so it's not so the lesser no, of two. No, so it's not about it's changing not optimal, things overnight. So for me, a nation state, and for me, a nation state, not always, but in certain places, is not the optimal solution. Right. But it's the best that you can have at the moment. Nation I would state, very much yeah, hope. But nation state is different from an ethno nation state. I mean, okay, what's yeah. the difference? Because I'm I'm missing out on the difference here. I mean, um, I mean, let's United take let's take Poland. Would you say Poland is an ethno state or a nation state? It depends. Okay, so the, it, it depends on if we're talking about the origins. I'm not talking about how they originated, right? When we talk, when you're talking about an ethno state, you're talking about whether their policies today um, is in favor of certain ethnicities in their in their okay. countries, right? I see. Right. So, okay. so I think like if if, if what whatever Israel's the way it started or wherever, wherever Poland started, it doesn't. It doesn't matter for today. What matters today is that if so, if if you're an Arab in Israel and you're an Arab citizen, if you're treated exactly like a Jew and you feel like you belong to this country as much as a Jew, then you're not an ethno state. Even if most people there are Jewish, right? Um, as long as the policy right now doesn't give you any okay. favors, so, right? Yeah. So what I would like, ideally, my ideal Israel, for me, the ideal Israel would be that it would be non-ethnic at all within within the state itself hmm. but but that it would still allow any jew who wants to come there to come without any restrictions that's the only thing that i would like based to, on them to being keep. a jew that's that's favorism like so if yes i would like it to have the fa the favorism in the migration policy because this is the problem that it was built to to solve and the problem still exists. If tomorrow there wouldn't be any more anti-Semitism in the world at all, and Jews would be safe and all that, maybe I would change my mind. That's not I, the case. I mean, Jews there are, are plenty Jews of anti-Semites. You don't believe Jews me? Are, Look at the life check. I mean, Jews are also <laughs> safe in the United States. I mean, it's not, you know. Uh, okay, Jews. Okay, if you look at Jewish history for the on the long run, Jews were safe in certain countries until they weren't. So yeah, sure. Poland was once a safe haven for Jews. But but okay, but even so, if I disagree with you that 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 the framing of that argument is not that these people need a country because they're ethnically Jewish. Like I'm not going to completely agree with you with that, but I think that framing would be more acceptable to me if it was like these people need a place because they are oppressed. No, you know what I mean the, that's the diff that's the difference to me. I think, but because most because they're oppressed as Jews and the I know, but the, the Jew the Jewish the Jewish element is not the element the the main reason. The oppressed element is the reason. Do you know what I mean? Like if we, if I if if I'm landing a helicopter. Uh, in ISIS held territory and two people come to me and one of them says I'm a Yazidi woman and another person says I'm a, I'm a Sunni man and I have only one more spot left I'm going to be like okay Yazidi woman you're you're up okay yeah, because obviously. because you're, you're if I let you here you you probably have much less chances than 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 the than the Sunni Muslim man right um but but it's not because I think Yazidi women are need are superior than other people. No, it's no, nothing to or, do with no. Or, or, it's, not or any, it's not about. Yeah. It, there's nothing special about being Yazidi. It's because your identity is used as a target. But again, that's the difference between mentality of the. I think people that ethno nationalists want ethno-nationalists, not uh, argue for ethno-nationalism, not because they're saying these group of people are oppressed or, or trying to save any group of people. I, I, some of them do try to make that excuse why people are being erased or something like that. But 
but it's it's about that's something special about that race that that deserves something because of no, them. No, so that's that's not the case that I'm making. The case that I'm making is, and the and that's not only me. If you go back to Theodor Herzl, that was his case. Theodor Herzl tried to be a, a general Jew in the world. It just didn't work. So he said, "Okay, guys, it doesn't work. We must have have an ethno state." Because any other other way we try to solve the problem didn't work, so it's a, it's the our resort is to have an ethno state. I don't think an ethno state is the best way to live in the world, but unfortunately, reality doesn't give me the luxury of of waving this idea because I can tell you even best based on the personal experience of my own family. If my grandmother didn't turn Zionist in the twenties, I wouldn't be here talking to you. Thank God for do you Zionism. Think ethnic state, Zionism. Do, you, do, you, do you think that ethnic states only makes uh, sense for for oppressed minor groups of people? I think ethnic or, states or, are or, justified if they solve a genuine problem that cannot be solved otherwise. otherwise can you think of any other examples? Any other example other than Israel that this makes sense? Yes, I can think of the Kurds making a very good case for their ethnic the state. The Kurds. The Kurds, yes, I can definitely see the Kurds making a good case for any the other. Ethnos. Any other? Any other? I can see, for example, the the African Sudan Sudanese, what is now South Sudan, hmm. that were targeted systematically because they were not Arabs. They were systematically and not Muslim. They were systematically targeted by the North, and so, and they had to rebel several times until they got their independence. I'm gonna I'm gonna read a few comments, or else I'm gonna lose them. Theo Mikey is saying, yes. "Just my opinion. I support Israel as an atheist because Israel is a secular state and it defends uh, a threatened minority." That's Theo Mikey's opinion. Uh, Sister Shikaz is asking another question: Do you believe in the Holocaust? Of course, I do. Yes, um, and I'm sure. A lot I believe I believe that it happened. I don't believe in it as a good way of solving things, but I believe <laughs> oh, that it happened. Oh shit! Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, to be yeah. specific, yeah, believe it happened. <laughs> oh my yeah. god! Oh god! Yeah. All right, that's very dark. Um, um, okay, so thumbs down in the ch a lot of people in the chat. Do you want to humor the life ch the 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 anti-Jewish? Um, yeah, go for it. If it's funny, yeah. The, what what oh, is the? They're putting the three parentheses around Kurds. So apparently, Kurds is. Does that mean like Kurds are a Jewish conspiracy as well? Is that what the people in the live chat? What can people in actually, the live chat? Actually, here's a fun fact. Here's a fun fact. <laughs> genetically speaking, genetically speaking, because they've checked it. Jews, Palestinian Arabs, and Kurds are the closest genetically, I think, in the world. Wow. Okay. Uh, but by the way, shout out to Bij and Christy for being so patient. I know they they hate this shit in the live chat right now, and they and they. I, I'm sorry. I know that they're listening to me and you letting saying that all these people let them be here. Uh, so Christy and Beach, thank you so much for being so patient with all this nonsense right now in the live yeah. chat. Uh, a lot of people are asking six million, six million. Yes, six million. Um, uh, well, obviously not to the exact figure, but uh, the the rough figure is six million. Yes. Yeah, oh my god. Um, so maybe do you want to have it like a, a another? So t today's discussion was about religion in Israel. Uh, wanna... You want to ask me about gay people? So I'll just I'll just mention oh, yeah, something about gay people in Israel. So obviously, the rabbinical institutions in Israel are the ones that have the monopoly on marriage. So what do gay people do? Uh, they cannot be recognized as married, but they can be recognized as common law spouses. So in terms of finance uh, and all the ec economic uh, aspects of being married, they, they actually enjoy the same rights. But no, they cannot come and say register themselves as married because of the religion. Um, Okay, so uh, by the way, uh, Sir Beach says yes, we do. Like yes, they want to actually remove all these people. So I know. So thank you so much, for, guys. Uh, the reason I think that the comments like this needs to be needs to stay. I don't, I don't, I'm, I don't believe in censorship. Is because it just shows. Like I think. Let me know, Beach and Christy, which are the mods in the live chat. Uh, let, do you guys think that? Yeah, Chrissy's saying this is fucking nuts. Yeah, it's fucking nuts. But don't you think that people should, uh, Chrissy and Beach? Don't you think people should see how nuts this is? Like, look at this live chat. It's amazing. Uh, people... I, I think it has a cultural value. I think we should keep it for for inform. You know, it has a educating value. We should know what what yeah. we're dealing with. People, people need to see what we're dealing with. Oh, some the nasty... president Goin says. President Goin says uh, six million sounds like another July. 
Uh, what? Okay, so what I other Christ- other what other Jew Jew lies do you know? I'm I'm, not, I'm curious. He has a catalog of Jew li- Jewish lies that he knows. And he, Nasty yeah. guys is putting putting the three parentheses. By the way, for people that don't know anti-Semitic language, uh, when you put th- uh, three parentheses around something, uh, it either means that this person is a Jew or it's a Jewish because it's a Jewish like conspiracy. Ah, yeah? Uh, okay. You, oh, you didn't know that? Oh, that's... No, I, 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 I follow these things a lot. So every time when you don't want to... When you want to try and hide your anti-Semitic oh, okay. views from... Like from, a dog whistle, kind of. So, yeah. yeah, it's a dog whistle. So you put three parentheses around whatever you want to point to people like, yeah. this guy is a Jew. I, I actually... <laughs> I'm actually I'm actually surprised we didn't see an 88 yet. I, I expected an, an 88 to show up. You know the figure 88 that people put? What does 88 mean? They're not, it's, like, it's like for HH... H H like Heil Hitler, so they don't they don't write the full <laughs> phrase. They they just put eighty eight. Oh, okay. So yeah, so, I'm, so so they put, actually, they're putting gay yeah. pe- gay people in three parentheses, and I think that they, what they're trying to say is that the whole gay rights movement is also a Jewish conspiracy. Just for okay, just so, for people that yeah. don't know the the narrative, what the narratives of uh, and a lot of anti Semitic views are is that the the Jewish people. Um, have this global conspiracy to dis- to weaken um, all advanced civilizations and Jewish people yeah. again. So somebody's going to cut this part out as if I'm saying it, but yeah. they have taken down many empires and now great nations are going to be also taken down by them away. They are people without nation, but they just sneak in their way in every place, and they basically take down nations by trying to. Uh, fu- uh, take away everything that makes a country or a nation strong. Yeah, like ja- fat- I just stop you here, guys. Armin doesn't believe in it. Yeah, He's I'm just describing the I'm ideology. Just describing the ideology. If someone is down, if if someone is joining now, the the yes, right now the video is not. Be- he doesn't believe in what he just <laughs> no, described. I, yes, I try to. On, f- I I follow. I follow a lot of these people from the alt right, alt left. I try to understand um, as much as possible what the people's narratives are. So they they think like family. The family is an important thing that makes a, makes civilizations great. The uh, and basically the Jewish conspiracy. They're trying to take it down with the feminism, with gay rights movement, with trans right movement. But they don't want these things for their own country. So Israel, for example, wants to keep ethno states for itself. But because it understands how powerful having an ethno state is, but it wants to go and uh, advocate for diversity everywhere else because it weakens other countries, because diversity is a weakness for every country. And all the, the, this Muslim stuff, ice, everything, it, Muslim immigration, all of this stuff is a Jewish conspiracy to make the other countries weak. Have I gotten yeah. you guys right, everybody? Like, let me know if I got your... Someone says, Armin, Armin exposed. I don't know what they mean, but maybe... Yeah. Oh, I don't know. So, yeah. Sister, sister uh, Shiksa is asking... Shiksa, is... Shiksa by the way, Shiksa is, is, a, is Yiddish term for a non-Jewish uh, woman. Yeah, so maybe that's why she calls herself that. Okay, she's saying, isn't hiding your ethnicity kind of dishonest? Well, I'm not hiding it. I just don't think it's important. Anybody, yeah. any, everybody knows where I'm from. I just don't think it's a big deal. It's not, it's not, it's no, how is it hidden? Everybody knows where I'm from. Everybody knows me knows where I'm from. It's on my Facebook profile someone, where I'm Someone from. is asking me, explain your satanic Talmud. So obviously I'm not going to explain to you why it is not satanic. But since you brought up Talmud and a lot of critics of Judaism yeah. bring up Talmud, I will say something about Talmud because I think people is getting it wrong. Talmud is not the word of God. Talmud is not a scripture that came, that just think God said. Talmud is basically built as a discussion between scholars uh, making their opinion about issues and making them logically in their way. So they would draw conclusions logically why they think their interpretation of the text is better than the other rabbi. So, so, and if you ever go to a Jewish yeshiva, to a scholarly Jewish institution, you'd see that a very common way of studying the text is with, in, in couples. You see two people standing in front of one book and then they would be debating. It's, long, it's not one person standing narrating something to another person that just has to sit and listen. It's two people standing next to a book debating. And this is how Talmud is, Talmud is built. So when people come and say, hey, it says in the Talmud that, and then they bring up some nonsense. Yeah, it's nonsense, but it's nonsense that one rabbi in the Talmud say, says. It doesn't mean that every, every person who wrote the Talmud agrees with this particular person. 
So Theo Mikey yeah. is asking, um, where does it go? This live chat is so active I, because with hate that I, is everything is scrolling by. Theo Mikey is saying, do you think Israel's founding is similar to America's manifest destiny? If so, isn't it fair to say it's uh, hard to morally justify it now? Uh, and we okay. Should, uh, and we should instead focus on problems now. And no, I, I okay. Mm. I don't think the concept of manifest destiny. Can you explain it to, to people, by the way, for people that don't know? I think I, if I get the concept of manifest destiny correct, mm. uh, the American leaders that that spoke about manifest destiny felt that it was. I don't know if they didn't think God wanted them to do it, but felt that this is something that destiny. Uh, uh, promises to um, to the American people. So their justification for expansion was it was this is our destiny and we have to fulfill it. I don't know what was their moral justification for this destiny, mm. but uh, it was a sense of fulfillment of something that that was meant for you to fulfill from some, I don't know what, history or God, I don't know what was their justification for that for their destiny. So, so uh, that's not the case of Israel unless you talk unless you all, you speak to a religious Zionist that, and they believe that's part of a divine plan. But if you speak to a secular Zionist like myself, I don't think it's a matter of destiny. It's a matter of resolving a problem for for the group that you belong to and this is the group of a problem as such. So it's not a problem of an individual. They have they experience problems because they were Jews. And then they had to find a solution to this problem. And the, pro the solution they suggested, other, by the way, there were other Jews that suggested other solution. I'll get to it in a minute. But the solution that the Zionists suggested was to create a nation state. And then they said, OK, so where is this nation state going to be? Well, it's going to be where we came from. That's that's is, that is the most most logical place to go and build right. it because I have to read from. I have to read the next one because th these are going very fast um, yeah. Arthur is saying uh, I understand that you wish to know what you're dealing with uh, yet friend this chat is being attacked by trolls who are spewing evil and hatred will you draw a line in the sand the thing is that Arthur the, removing these people from the live chat is not going to make their ideas go away. And I don't know if a lot of people understand how common these views are. And I think more people need to see how common these views are because most people think that this is a small problem. But you can see how how big of a he, he, thing is. Armchair, what is this? This is, Oh, I went on. Somebody says, stop saying, where does it go? The armchair one. Uh, stop saying, okay, here. Um, where did it go? It's so and so far. I've never had a live chat this active. Okay, a word, a word oh, for the anti-Semites out there. For your own benefit, don't right. post so much because otherwise we can't follow your own nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, some, uh, I'm sure something is saying, stop saying we hate, we're just exposing Jewish supremacy. We do it out of love for humanity. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. That's really <laughs> clever and cute. Did you come up with it all by yourself or did someone help uh, you? He, here's one thing that the Jewish religion uh, gives uh, to that anti-Semite. So, so the Jewish religion is absolutely nonsense, just like every other religion out there, right? Uh, the thing is that just like the, a lot of bigots, uh, you know, we shed on Islam as an ideology because Islam as an ideology is also nonsense. But I think just like a lot of bigots against Muslims as people, use the nonsense in Islam as a way to attack Muslims as people. A lot of people, um, a lot of uh, people that are against Jewish people as, as individuals use a lot of nonsense in Jewish scripture, which is absolutely nonsense. The Jewish religion is barbaric, batshit, crazy, ancient, uh, you know, bullshit. But they use that as a way to direct their hate towards people. And I think one of one of the things that is part of the nonsense of the Jewish re religion is the Jewish supremacy as an ethnic group. Like the, it, it is. Uh, okay, I have I have to attend I have to at attend that because I think this is a, a bit that is getting wrong very often and by people that also pretend to be very educated about. It. I'm not referring to you. I'm referring to yeah. to academics and all that. Right. Uh, there are two. There, there is a main difference between Judaism and, let's say, Islam or Christianity, uh, in in two major things, and this relates to the apparent supremacy. Jew, even the most extreme Jew in the world, do, doesn't think the Jews should take over the entire world. The most he wants to Jews to take over with 
or over is the promised land, and, and that's it. Secondly, even the um, most extreme Jew in the world, I'll get to the supremacy in a minute, but I'll explain to you why, why, how it relates. Even the most extreme Jew in the world doesn't want everyone to convert and, and become Jewish. Now, when, a Jew, when, when the Jew uses the term the chosen people, let's say, when people use the term the chosen people, it doesn't mean that I have more privileges, privileges as a Jew to, comparing to a non-Jew. On the contrary, I am obliged as a Jew for far more, uh, far more than a non-Jew is obliged to. So God will be happy with you as a non-Jew far faster than he will be happy with me because I have more to account for. So, yes, mm -hmm. I'm chosen, but I'm chosen for what? Not for more privileges. I'm chosen for more obligations. No. And this is the bit that people get, get wrong. I don't now, need... when it comes, hang on, hang on. When it comes to the promised land or to the... According to the to the Jewish scriptures, yes, of course, their Jews have more rights than others because, according to the religion, in this particular promised land, the, uh, God promised it to them, and the rest are you know are foreigners in the land. So, ob obviously, there is an element of supremacy there, but not there is no element of you being chosen as a human being more than another person, and now you are more privileged, generally speaking. I mean, I talk to a, a rabbis and a lot of Jewish pe people, and I and I I got the complete different sense on this because uh, I'm I met many Jewish people. Um, you you keep an eye on the sister uh, comment. Uh, Shiksa, yeah. Shiksa, yeah. So um, that think that at the end of the day, um, this is very religious Jews that think that at at the end of the world, Jews will take over and all non-Jews will be slaves uh and i heard i heard that i've talked I heard to people said, with this opinion i i heard that said i i'm not that much of a jewish scholar to know maybe they found somewhere with it's written but i don't think it's I've from seen the, the Torah. Text. no i've seen well i think it's from the talmud i'm not sure but uh, okay so I, as but, i said as i explained again what talmud was talmud is, is debates between various rabbis so it's not talmud is not the word of god Talmud but, is the word of various rabbis, and it and but they see it was, as authentic as word of God. They see themselves. I mean, Talmud to Tal, Talmud is um, the rabbis are the agents of how to live. But as, the rabbis in the Talmud themselves not don't always agree with each other. I, yeah, I understand that, but but they still see it as a but big obviously. Source. But but let me let me I'll, make make my point. But a lot of there's a lot of extre extreme Jews that think that um, that non Jews are subhuman uh, and i've seen them say that themselves uh, that they're subhuman that they will be slave one day and they don't think that's a mean thing to say because they think uh, that actually it's an honor to be a slave for a jew again this is a very minority fringe group but yeah, it does but exist like saying, it, yeah but that's it, like saying okay it's like going it's like going to a german person who is proud of his german heritage and blame him for what a nazi says the no, fact that you have no, the fact I'm that not you have blaming Nazi, all the. Obviously, I'm not doing that. Are you saying I'm blaming all the Jews? No, 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 no. no. But no, no, no. But but I'm, yeah. what I'm saying, what I'm saying is that the fact that they those religious Jews uh, say it, those things that you just said doesn't mean that their their religion mandates it. They picked they picked one. You know the Tal You can pick in the Talmud heaps of stuff. They just like the Hadith particular. in the just like Hadith in Islam. The Quran itself has is fair. No, it's not. It's not just the hadith because because hadith is what Muhammad said or did, and then people. But there's disagreement on that what authentic hadith is, right? Just like the disagreement on the Talmud. So the Quran is very no, but the hadith. If you if you bring a sentence from the hadith, that sentence is a quotation of the. Let's assume we, we it's an authentic but, one, right? No, yeah, but that, the, but the, there's a disagreement between Shias and Sunnis, for example, of which ones are the authentic ones. No, but let, let's say we, we take a, a hadith that everyone says is sahih, is, is, is authentic, okay? What's in there is things that Muhammad said. Now, Muhammad has a very specific role and image in the theology of Islam. Hmm. The Talmud, the people who speak in the Talmud, they're not equivalent in Judaism to what Muhammad is in Islam. Hmm. The quotations in the Talmud are not, are not quotations of someone who is as important in Judaism as Muhammad is in Islam. So yes, I'm sure you can find a lot of xenophobic so, stuff. In, I understand in the that, but 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 what you say about 
hadith in Islam, again, I'm playing devil's advocate because I do think hadith is very high up there, very close to the Quran when it comes to um, authority. Yep. But but you can say like, yeah, but there's this agreement whether or not this is what Muhammad said or not. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Like even if Muslims agree that if Muhammad said this, this is absolute truth and you have to follow it. That's not the disagreement. The disagreement is not whether or not follow Muhammad's way or not. The disagreement is on whether or not Muhammad actually yes. said this, right? So but once once you have an agreement that Muhammad said it, yeah. Then then it's then yeah, it's but it still but it still makes it makes that source a little bit questionable. But again, not as question maybe not as questionable for us, but the the but we can say whether or not you see Talmud as as an authentic part of Judaism or not. It, it could, is an authentic part of rabbinical Judaism, but it's not the word of God. That's the that's the point. It's but, rabbis debating issues. But we themselves. could definitely say that the Talmud is horseshit, right? Well, I I don't use such terms, but I don't yeah. believe in Talmud. Yeah, right. I wouldn't use horseshit. I I wouldn't use the word horseshit. But yeah, I don't believe in Talmud. I don't. I I'll tell it's you, not. I'll can you say nonsense? Can you say I'll, it's I'll, nonsense? I'll it differently. I if I see something in the Talmud that I think makes sense, I'll I'll accept it not because it's from the Talmud, but because it makes sense as a rule. But I if something comes from the Talmud, that's not a source of authority for me. I right. don't consider the Talmud a source of authority for me. But even the begin. Torah, I mean, I'm, and the Torah the same. Let's say if the yeah. Torah say you, that you should not kill, I will not kill because I think it doesn't make sense to kill, not because the Torah said it, right? No, but I don't. I mean, I don't like. I don't. People like, oh, I look at the Quran and I only take the good parts. When then you're not looking at the Quran, you're just using your own yes. moral compass, right? Yeah, yes. but just, the Talmud, just take away. The Talmud, take away. Built, huh. the Talmud is not monolithic. The Talmud can be <laughs> self-contradicting. Yeah, but but that's, that's but that's not a good thing. That that ma that makes it a very useless source of moral guidance. Just get throw it away and use your own logic, right? You are expecting me to recommend the Talmud as a moral guidance? Then uh, then no. you're wasting your time. I'm not going to recommend it as no, a moral but, guidance. But but I don't like it when people say like, you know, I understand that the Quran or the Bible is nonsense, but I could get some good things out of it. No, if you if you're if you're cherry picking, then then that's not a source of anything. You're just using your own moral compass. No, but, but, let's, but, say, but let's say, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. Uh, you know, you know the medication uh, Adolan for uh, drug addicts? Adolan. There, it's a medication for drug addicts to try to rehabilitate. Uh, Adolan was named, the reason, the name Adolan is, is driven from the name Adolf because the person who invented Adolan was an admirer of Adolf Hitler. So what? You think because the first time I came across this medicine, it came from a Nazi, I'm not going to use it? Yeah, I will use it, even though the first person who came, I understand who came that, after but it was a Nazi. But, but then you don't give credibility to that person, though. You don't. You just say, this just makes sense, but I'm not... You yes, know. exactly, of course. But, of but course. the thing I'm is, that, going... but don't pick it out of the Quran or the Talmud or the uh, or the Torah or the I Bible. Pick it, I pick it from whoever gives it to me if, he, if he's the first one to give it. I don't care who gives it to me. If it's a good thing, but, if it's a good okay. thing, I'll take Okay, but the thing is that, first of all, there's no good things in the Torah or the Quran or the Bible. I think uh, I think thou shalt not kill is a good thing. No, no, it doesn't make any sense. First of all, thou yeah. shalt not kill does not make any sense. First of all, because it's the same book that tells you to kill a whole bunch of other people, right? Uh, yeah. So if you so, look at the if but, you look at the li links to the satire, look, because there is one bit that refers exactly to what right. you just said. Yeah, but yeah. but the thing is that thou shalt not kill is such a is such a simplistic rule you know for thousands of years <laughs> philosophers have came up with ethics yes. like the the greeks and the romans philosophers have discussed okay, I'll ethics thing. I, i'll give no, you like, it's, no, it's Sorry. nothing it's Sorry. like it's like hey kill these people rape those people burn the witches stone gay people and and then also oh be kind to your neighbor oh thank you so much that's very kind of you to add that there and it's it's nothing and it's so simplistic and it's so yeah. basic moral guidance that has has added no value and is it it has no nuance it has no and it's nothing compared to the philosophers and um, and the discussions around ethics for th for thousands of years that came before the bible and they in they introduced nothing new and people people pretend like they have revolutionized like oh okay, judo, -cri judo christian I mean, I values don't, i don't yeah. care about who came up with it first what i care about if i see a good idea i don't know where it i don't care where it comes from i'll take it so for but example, it's not a good, example, like thou shalt not let's kill. Look, hang, on, hang, on, hang on, hang on, hang yeah, on. Okay. Let's let's look at the Torah, for example. The Torah came up with the idea that you work six days and then you rest one day. I think it's a good thing that that you have a week <sighs> and then you have one day where you don't have to go to work. I think as a rule, 
no. that's a nice idea, and I'm happy with it. No, it's so not. I, it's not it's, it. Don't I, make I'm that a rule. I'm very happy that I, no, that I have a weekend. No, I'm very happy with the weekend. But you just judge based on circumstances. If you come up with a general rule like that, it's gonna it's gonna fuck up with your life in unexpected ways. Just like you have to look at the situation. This is a problem with religion. They came up with general rules for everything, no matter what. That's nonsense. You're gonna have to look at every single yeah. scenario. So, so in case in, in the case of Judaism, I think he did a very good a very good job at getting mm. into the very tiny details. Uh, yeah. And uh, I don't see, I don't no, follow Judaism. I disagree. But, uh, but I can't. One thing you cannot blame Judaism is that it can, comes with general rules and then and doesn't care for the context. Because it's the same. It's the same book that tells you to cut your cut a woman's hands off if if it was if it was trying to defend her husband in a fight by grabbing the other person's balls. Like that's the that's the book we're talking about. What are you talking? I don't about? think that's from the Torah, but okay. That, it's in the Old Testament. Doesn't that make it also part of the Torah? Uh, really, really, yeah. is it in the Old Testament? Yeah, okay, no, it's I, in the I, Old I... Testament. It says basically when two men are fighting, right? If the wife of the, one of them comes and tries to protect her own husband and grabs the other man's balls in in, in trying to which defend... book in the Old Testament? I'm just now you got me curious. Which book in the Old Testament? Remember? I have to look it up and, and my okay. Internet... Send it to me later. Okay, okay. but the point. I, the point but the point I'm is that you know what you have to do in that situation. You have to cut off her hand, and and you have to show her no pity. Like what the fuck is that? And you're you're talking about this bloke, I'm like, oh yeah, Armin, Armin, you are de you are you are debating the wrong person. I know, I'm, no, no, to go I'm just saying, the... I'm not, no, no, I'm, I know you disagree with this nonsense, okay? I know you're an atheist yes. and you disagree, but what I'm saying is that a book that has those kind of stuff in it should not get credit for just a just a warm, fuzzy, positive I, message here or but there. I don't give. Okay, I'm not giving credit to the book as a whole. I don't care if if tomorrow I open Mein Kampf and Mein Kampf says it's good to brush your teeth twice a day. <laughs> exactly. Say, wow, that's that's a good idea. But I'm not going to say, oh, Mein Kampf is such a great book. I'm just going to really? say, oh, I found something useful in Mein Kampf. That's but, all. But I'm going to ask you, like, did you not know that you have to brush your teeth before you saw the Mein Kampf? I, that's okay, what I would well, ask. Me, that's what me, I would no, ask okay. you. <laughs> like, did you exactly? Yeah, okay, so that's maybe, a great example because you're like, oh, so if you didn't, if thou shalt not kill, did you not? Were you going to go kill people randomly if you didn't read that in the Old Testament? That's my question. Right. Yeah. So I I can't think of an example now that I didn't know in advance. But <laughs> at the same time, I'm a product of Jewish society. So maybe all the things that I knew in, in advance yeah. were a product of the scripture. I don't know. I think when Basically, people, I'm, saying, people I'm, I'm trying to make I, a general point here. Hmm. If if I see if you see a good idea, it doesn't matter which book it comes from. A good idea is a good idea, and a bad one is a bad one. Now I definitely I personally would not give credit to a whole book just because it has one good idea and heaps of bad ideas. I'm, I'm not going to do I, that. I, w I say, on average, if people start, uh, if they just individually look at ideas and co do cost benefit analysis, they shouldn't give, they shouldn't look, f uh, they shouldn't look at religion as like, oh, I'm a product of my environment or my eth identity or my ethnicity or my upbringing. Well, stop being pro a product of that and stop, s start being a product of your own logic and your own analysis. The more you are a product of your environment, the less, the less you're actually, uh, I mean, I'm not saying you did that. Okay. We're, I, I mean, yeah. but I'm just saying that that's not a good, uh, uh, that's not a good excuse. Everything when we say, I, I I understand that you're not saying that, but when we say like, well, this came out of the Quran and I judge it to be a good thing, I just think that a lot of people are not, most of the time are trying to give some credibility to the Quran or to the Bible or to the Torah when they say that. That's a real, yeah, that's that's, real thing. Look, I think it's a very weak line of defense. I, I generally say, I generally say it's not, it's not a big deal for me if you show me that there is something good in, in a certain book or in a certain ideology. Right. That's not that, that my what my what I care about is at the end of the day whether this ideology has done good to the world or bad to the world as a whole. I don't care. So yes, I'm very happy that Arabs no longer bury their daughters as they are born as they used to do before Islam. I think it's that's a, good a lie, thing. by the way. They made that up. Ah, yeah. Yeah, they made that up just to say that how much Islam improved. There's no evidence that they were doing that. They made that story okay. up to just show how Islam improved everything. Okay, so I know I didn't come up with other things. I don't know what else, what yeah. else they were doing that Islam... Uh, that uh, I used to... Okay, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm... I mean, come uh, on, they bury every fucking daughter. Like, the daughters were an asset. 
I mean, they they, <laughs> they they're, they're seen as property. Why would you destroy your own assets that you could sell off? That doesn't make any fucking sense. Uh, but yeah. so, but anyway, I, I'm if if you tomorrow you show me something good that Islam has changed, I'll be happy that he did it. But that doesn't that that doesn't. Islam change has history. done nothing yeah. good. Muslims have okay, done. Okay, but Muslims have done many. My... Muslims have done good. Islam okay, has let's, done nothing. Let's good. be hypothetical. Let's right. be hypothetical for a second and assume that Islam or Judaism or Christianity has introduced one good idea to the world. Let's assume for a second. Yeah. My my response to this would be my response to this would be if it's a good idea, I take it. But that doesn't mean that I believe that there is an imaginary right. entity up there uh, that I have to follow. That okay. that doesn't one doesn't follow from the other. Right. And my claim is that they none of them have introduced a single original good idea. Not only they <laughs> have not only that they have not done that. What they have done that is that they have taken some good original ideas and they have ruined it. And they have simp and they Christianity and Judaism was a step backwards when it comes to progress okay. of mankind. It was nothing. Well, in, yeah. Okay. Well, in that case, this kind of argument you'll have to have you have to have with a Jewish theologian or a rabbi because I'm simply not qualified enough to answer right. each and every question right, that right. you bring. Okay. okay I'm I, not the right person to, to talk I, about. Let me let me close this very soon, J Jeff. That the question you're asking is very interesting, but I, I don't think we should we can, we have time to address it here. We'll bring that up in an ethno-nationalist discussion. I'm going to try to remember that. Uh, Theo Mikey is saying here's a question for for you based on how often religious Jewish apologists bring up the Talmud. Does that word ever become synonymous to excuses? Hmm, I don't know what you're talking what? about. What? I don't know. I'm not sure I understand the question. Based on how often religious Jewish apologists bring up the Talmud, does that word ever... Be... I, don't, I think what so, we're saying is that the Talmud is being used by anti-Jewish people, not by Jewish... Is it? Do Jewish apologists bring up the Talmud often? I think they bring I the Torah know. often. We don't know. I don't know. Talmud Talmud is the is the main is the main text that they study in the yeshivas, but, right. but it's not uh, just because it's... Uh, to the best of my understanding, they just they it it has to do uh, with ideas about how you should run your life, and then there there are rabbis debating uh, in the Talmud debating certain problems and how to solve it based on the scriptures. That's that's what Talmud is. So it's basically right. a compilation of discussions. Right, and uh, and, and, and uh, yeah, but, um, I I always yeah I I kind of still think that the relationship to, of Talmud to Torah is kind of like the relationship between Hadith no, to the Quran. No, I don't. Because, <laughs> because the main characters because the main characters in Talmud are not equivalent to Muhammad to Muhammad mm -hmm. in their right. theological status. Right, but I the way the way that I see the correlation is kind of like when you have the Quran and then you have the Hadith to come up with the Tafsir to explain how to live the life according to the Quran. But Hadith is not Tafsir. You have Hadith, tafsir, is, hadith. hadith is not Tafsir, but Tafsir uses Hadith. Okay, that's a different story. So but, is, but, is Tafsir closer to Talmud though? Tafsir uh, is closer to Talmud. Tafsir, from what I know, it goes verse by verse. So you have the Quran, and then you have the Tafsir that explains verse by verse. So no, because I don't think, to the best of my understanding, Talmud doesn't go verse by verse. Uh, so I don't, I'm not sure there is an equivalent. I'm no, I don't know enough about Islamic theology. I'm not sure there is an equivalent to Talmud. But basically, if in Islamic theology you have a compilation of sco Islamic scholars debating issues, then that would be probably more equivalent to the Talmud. Well, I mean, uh, I mean, Tal if you if you think about Talmud, see, the uh, whole bunch of rabbis just comment is commentary, isn't it? It's it's the from what the best that I understand. I'll have to if you if you I'll have to read more to be more accurate. But for the, my the best of my understanding, is Talmud is built with issues that are then discussed by different rabbis and they bring different reasonings mm -hmm. why their their position on the issue is is the one that should be followed. And uh, actually, Talmud, yeah. Alex, the question you're asking, we we addressed that a little bit earlier. If uh, go back and watch it later, Theo is uh, saying the thank you so much for this, Theo. He's saying uh, De Deuteronomy. De I always have a problem. Deuteronomy. Saying Deuteronomy, twenty-five. Chapter 25, verses 11 to 12, is where the rule for to cut off the hands of wives who grab balls during a fight. Deuteronomy 25. I'll look it up. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'll look enough. I mean, again, I mean, other examples are the fact that you have to stone a woman 
if, uh, in front of her father's house if she has sex out of marriage. Uh, if you rape somebody before they, uh, bef uh, a, a woman, a virgin, then you have you could just go pay the father and you then you own her and she's forced to marry her rapist. This is all in the Torah. This is all. But yeah, it's all but testament. why? Why are you telling it to me? Are you expecting me to no, defend it? Because no, 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 no. I'm happen. telling it. I'm telling it to our audience. So yeah. just, just to say, I, I know. I, okay, just to be very clear to everybody, you are an atheist and you are yeah. anti-religion. I'm anti critical. I'm, I'm cr very critical of, of the Jewish religion. I'm of very critical religion. of the Jewish religion. Right. I will not. I will not go. I, uh, I will not start go evangelizing the, the world to atheism. That's not my thing. I will not go and deliberately convince religious people to become atheists. If they leave me alone, that, I'm going to leave them alone. That's my I don't job. care. They, that's my job. If they, <laughs> right, that's, but that's me. That's me. So I'm right. not sure but you, anti-religious but, 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 but do you see, but do you see, well, I mean, I can have that discussion for you forever. I'm, yeah. I see a value in trying to convince people out of their religion. And I have been yeah. doing that for the past 14 years. Um, I mean, I mean, I, I'm happy when it happens, but, but, on, but if I live in a place, for example, like I live in Australia, I don't even know what's the religion of my neighbor is. You but know, it is, is very, I mean, to me, even because, if, because he doesn't make a big deal out of it. So I don't know, maybe he's a Christian and most, I don't know. It doesn't, it, you have to fight bullshit whether or not it's influencing or not, because the, the, I mean, as a general rule, the less people believe in bullshit, the better it is for humanity. I think uh, even even if somebody to me, um, if, if, he, the example I give is like if, if, if a peaceful Muslim that hasn't hurt a single person ever and is not planning as to hurt a single person ever. But he, he fasts, he goes to mosque all the time, he spends a lot of money giving it to his mosque, uh, even though this person is not hurting anybody, he, he's there's still a victim here. He himself is a victim here. Yeah, I mean, it's but very, he, it's he a, chooses to victimize himself. No, so. you you choose to victimize him also by not giving him an option. Like, me, like no, I we, give him an, no, no. I definitely want him to live in a society that gives him an option. Just hold on for a second, Sister Shik. So you asked me how can I call myself a Jewish atheist? I referred to it before, but I'll, but for your sake, I'll repeat the example of the Greek person that can be a Greek atheist and he's still Greek even though he doesn't worship Zeus. So I don't worship Jehovah, but I'm still Jewish. Yeah, just the, Jew the same is way not that the Greek doesn't worship Zeus. But he's still Greek. Sister, yeah, so sister, back to your, sister yeah. Shiksa, Jew, the word Jew refers to a religion or an ethnicity or uh, a culture. Um, somebody could be ethnic Jew and not a religious Jew. Some, you know, somebody could be a cultural Jew and not a religious Jew. So it, it refers to three different things. Um, what, what was I asking you? So you were telling me that why about victimizing the person. What my response to you is. My job is to make sure that, that the society we live, we live in will allow him, A, to be exposed to other ideas and okay. make his decision, and B, to be able to leave his religion if that's what so, he wants so to do. So we are the people that but expose I won't them. Go, but I will not knock on my Muslim neighbor's door and say, I got to talk to you about Quran because it's such bullshit. I'm not going to do no, that. No, no, no. We don't, we, don't we, don't go go to, we don't go to them. We, t we give them the chance to come to us. That's what oh, we Oh, yes. Do. So, oh, definitely. So, but the thing is that we say, a lot of people is like, why can't you let people believe what they want? I tell them, if we don't give them the opportunity to be exposed to other our views, you're the person that is not letting them believe what they want. Because if they're exposed to only one idea and they choose it because they have only been exposed to one idea, then that's not really a choice. Giving yes. them a choice requires you to provide them with alternative options. That's the real way to provide people with uh, giving them the freedom to believe what they want. When we yes. tell them, hey, by the way, guys, have you considered that there might not be a God? That's an invitation. That's not forcing any content on people, right? A lot of people yeah. are like, oh, now you're just like the Christians or the Muslims that is advocating for their religion. Or like, we, we don't, we're not against Christians advocating christianity we we don't we're not telling muslims not to not advocate for islam we just think we should they should advocate for islam but they should also let us challenge them and i think that we are the people that challenge them and we think uh, what we do is required a lot of people like let them believe what they want how are we forcing them not to believe what they want yes. just because we're challenging their views and i'm not saying everybody should go out and challenge islam but you but even if you're not or challenge Judaism or challenge Christianity, but 
at least have some appreciation for people that do it, even if you're not doing it yourself. I mean, yeah. Anyways, do you agree uh, with I that? See, I see it. I see it. Sorry. Do you agree with that? I I agree. I I just I'll tell I'll, I'll give you an example of some things that I I don't like with atheists. So for example, Dawkins I think is very militant with his atheism and his and his so preaching for atheism. So am yeah, I. So. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, but okay, I, I mean, that's why I love I mean, him. <laughs> no, I, 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 there are a lot of things I like about him. Yeah. Uh, no, but his militant atheism like. is what I like about him. Yeah, so that's how militant you want to go. My, I say, I say, uh, you know, you said about good things, good things in Islam. Do you know? Do you know uh, Surah Al Kafirun? Uh, so anyway, so, you have your religion, I have mine. Yeah. Let's wow, your Arabic alone. is your huh? Arabic is good. By the way, thank yes. you, thank you, sister, for sister something that for all the donations. That's very nice of you. But Lakum Dina Kumal Yuddin is total bullshit. By the way, uh, that was only when Islam was when he was in a weak position. Even when the Muslims acknowledge that, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but now uh, I want to. Uh, some of the anti-Semites here they're probably trying to tease me by posting foreskin remarks, things about foreskins. So I can only I can only tell you that in Israel there are certain now it started uh, there are Jews secular Jews and atheist Jews that decided not to circumcise their kids and uh, this movement is growing and active. So all of you foreskin people, if you think you're teasing me in any way, uh, I don't know I don't honestly just enjoy your foreskin and 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 leave me alone because it doesn't really tease me much. I, I I go beyond leaving me alone. I want to actively change the minds of the people that even the ones that are not harming anybody. Because you know you you know if you, if you believe if you believe like in fortune telling, right, or, yes. or in the zodiac signs, uh, yeah, that those are nonsense, right? And people say like, well, yeah, but they're not if people that believe in fortune telling. They're not harming anybody, right? And yeah. I will say, yeah, but but you fight bullshit wherever you see it, because the people that believe in harmless evidence without uh, in harmless nonsense, the people that believe in harmless nonsense yes, without yes. evidence, they will believe in harmful ones as they well. They also believe in harmful. They will believe in harmful nonsense without evidence. I mean, what I say is that the people that believe in fortune telling and zodiac signs and all that stuff, they if they are the same people that when people tell them vaccines cause autism, they also they also start believing that. Uh, and, yeah, so when, and, and the, the so when, when it will begin, when it start being harmful, I I can see the general. No, but you lost them you already. Mentioned... You lost the the filter you could introduce. It was already w was with the uh, demanding evidence and demanding logic to back up an argument. W you can't be like, oh, I'll just get involved once this becomes harmful. Okay, if people, so... if people, if you don't, if you don't teach people how to recognize nonsense from uh, from from reality. What argument are you going to use to, for them to, to? It's too late that they don't but have the, that filter anymore. Yeah. But when you come, when you come and make an argument in the against the like, when it, in Judaism at least, when you come and make an argument against the Jewish instruction, religious instruction in the name of logic, and you say, guys, this doesn't make sense because A, B, C, and D leads to D, whereas your whereas yours leads to E, you're gonna the rabbis. The, the rabbis, you're no challenge for the rabbis because they're just going to tell you, look, we cannot understand the logic of God. The fact that you cannot perceive it and I cannot perceive it in our own limited human logic doesn't mean that it's not true. His logic is far beyond ours. And that, yeah, that's the end of Muslims the say the them. same thing. Muslims say the same thing. Yeah, so they're but not, uh, you know, you're not. They, don't uh, lose, no, but, but I know people that used to say the same thing and now they're atheists. So don't give up on Yes. People. Yeah, so, but ba basically, I would start fighting nonsense when it's harmful. If, I, if I'm not going late. to start fighting every, every irrational nonsense I come across, honestly, I won't have much time for anything else, which I assume <laughs> is your case, actually. I think, I think you're getting there, from what I understand. You're very busy fighting nonsense all the time. No, but, so... I mean, the biggest nonsense, the most popular nonsense in the world is God. So if you could teach people why... This is why I have wrote the book, Why There Is No God, because I think that's the most popular nonsense. If you take out, you go after the nonsense that is the most mainstream. Uh, and, you know, when, you, when, when people's 
you, you go after the and and that's a nonsense that is a source of a whole bunch of other nonsense you you don't you, if you you go right at the source that's what i think anyways well, i think we've gone for too long thank you arthur yeah, is saying you're very welcome atheist republic i may not agree with you always but i see that you have a good uh, aura uh, i mean despite your profanity oh thank you i see your soul and it's good do you know what it is well i don't agree with all this aura and um well, we must have done something up. wrong there. No, no, I mean, it, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's good. I, I, I think no, it's a positive I, sentiment. It's a so positive sentiment, that. so thank you for that. I appreciate you saying that. Um, I love well, some people. Yeah, so the live chat turned around so positive all of a sudden. I don't know what happened. Uh, yeah. People are being nice. Oh, this is this one guy that just keeps saying shame. I don't know who this guy is. Blue Velvet is saying, this is why you are not chosen. You've rejected God. Okay. Okay. Well, Theo, I'll have Mikey, to deal with that further. <laughs> Theo Mikey is saying, plugging your book in the middle of the chat. I see what you did there. <laughs> what's that? What's that? Pl I plugged my book, Why There Is No God, ah. right in the middle of a chat. Um, yeah. yeah. But, well, talking about plugging things, guys, if you are one of those Zionist people that wants to support us, we, we appreciate your, um, your support, your, your, the PayPal link, and all the. Find us on atheistrepublic.com. Uh, and if you're on YouTube, the PayPal link and the Patreon link is in the description. If you're Illuminati or if you're uh, the Zionist Jew or if you're reptile people or aliens or whatever, obviously we're, we're spreading Zionist Jewish propaganda, so support our channel. Um, <laughs> Spaceman01 is saying, keep rocking our men. Oh, thank you. Uh, BJ is saying, oh, go, go guys, go sleep. Chrissy, thank you so much. Chrissy is very tired. It's 2.30, 2.20. Two yeah, uh, we've I, been here for three hours, right? Yes, yeah, but Chrissy, thank you so much you know, for staying along. That's very sweet of you. Go sleep, go yeah, sleep. Yeah, Beach Price. Beach, Beach Price, Price as well. Yeah, Beach Tech. Uh, be, and Chrissy and Beach, I know you guys hold back on removing all this nonsense in our live chat. At one point, I want to have an entire discussion on anti-Semitic views. Do you, would you be interested in that? Yeah, sure. Okay, because yeah, we let's all yeah, these all the people Maxim speaks Hebrew to me. Yes, an Israeli Maxim. Yeah, a, a lot of the people in the live chat that think that we're ignoring them is because uh, the love the anti-Semitic people in the live chat that think we're ignoring. We're them on is, our way to you. No, I didn't yep, ignore you. We we were we were talking about religion in Israel. That's why we didn't address your comments. But we invite you to come back one day, uh, and we want to address the Holocaust, anti-Jewish. Uh, you know the Jewish conspiracy theories and all of that, and you guys bring all the facts and all your knowledge to us. No, hang on, hang on, hang on. I I don't think I'm I'm going to bother no. myself with conspiracy theories because it uh, just uh, tell me, so I just, can discuss with you anti-Semitism as a phenomena, but right. don't expect me now to start explaining people why we're not trying to take over the world. <laughs> that shit. No, no wanna, I'm not going to waste my time with them. Can do you? Okay, let's. We could talk about. Uh, that in another chat, but do you also can you also recommend to me any everybody like uh, somebody to, to go through every single one of these conspiracy theories with the I think that would be an interesting discussion. Oh, I'll have to think about if someone is willing to burden themselves with I can't come come up with anyone yeah. off the top of my head. I right. will just comment to you and to other uh, people who are following us. There are a lot of groups on the Facebook they're in Hebrew for of atheists and secular so uh, so you might want to pick for another discussion another atheist Jew, or you might want to try and make contact with them. Uh, right, right. Yeah. I'll... Yuval is scared of something. Hang on, I want to know what, yeah, I'm scared of the truth. Maybe I'm scared of the truth, you know, enlighten I'll... me. Yeah, Alex yeah. is saying, but don't you want, need to prioritize what you uh, what you put your limited energy into tackle the most harmful analysis? What I would say, Alex, I try to go to the root of the problem, and but uh, I, I do agree that we have to pick our battles. But I think when you when if you wait for a harmful for an idea to be harmful, you're just basically uh, you know you, you you're oh. cutting off the branches. I, I, yeah, well, my if you, my if answer you, is you, different. I it, I agree. I agree with his approach, and I think right now the most harmful religion is not Judaism or Christianity, it's Islam. Maybe in another century I, we, I would focus yeah, but, personally on, on fighting another one. But That's, my, with, that's no, my approach. I totally agree with you that the most harmful religion right now is Islam, but if you look at the people, if you look at the people that are making the most change in the Islamic world, is the ex-Muslim movement. It's, not the pe it's the people that are telling Muslims that, hey, have you considered that this might be bullshit? All of it. Yeah. Not, not yeah. the people that say like, hey, have you considered not blowing up people? Maybe this verse means something else, right? We, yeah, the course. people that are going right at the source of the problem, 
problem that they're saying hey maybe the, maybe looking at the book as a source of all authority is kind of bullshit those those are the people that are making yes. the difference the Look, ex-muslim so so we have the numbers. I can have a go. We, we I, I I can have a go for an hour with yeah. at the at the reform movement if you want me to. So, but I don't so think the fact that the support that you that you agree that the ex-Muslim movement is making a bigger difference than the reform yes. movement should, basically goes to my argument that targeting every targeting the problem at the source is the most effective way of going about it. Anyways, this is turning into a different discussion. You both uh, are Jews. We're both Jews. Army. Someone tells us here. Yeah, we. Uh, yeah, I'm apparently <laughs> a secret Jew. I don't mind people, you know, if you think that's an insult, I'm not going to correct you because the same when people say like, oh, Armin, you're gay. Uh, like, I'm not <laughs> going to bother correcting you because I don't see that as an insult. And now yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm getting more insults of people like, oh, Armin is a Jew. Like, why should I yeah. correct that? Well, if I correct that, it means that I see it as an insult. Didi says you made it, you valed. Didi. Yeah, thank you very much. But all the people that th they think we're supported by the Jews, can you please uh, all you uh, let them know, give send them a link to our PayPal because we we yes. we do need the support. Rothschild, uh, and it, Rothschild, yeah, we're waiting yeah. for your money. But, but anybody know. else that also enjoys these kind of discussions, please support us uh, either on Patreon or on PayPal, and the link is in the description. We're doing it. By the way, if, I don't know if you know this, we're doing a lot of new amazing projects. We're starting to try. We're doing. We have started our Atheist Republic in Persian for Iranian atheists. And we just got started in making our Arabic version as well for uh, Subhanallah. <laughs> so and also in our Arabic version of Atheist Republic, we're going to tackle not just Islam, but also Christianity. We're going to because a lot of Arabs are becoming Christian and we want to also fight. Uh, I mean, I know Islam is the main target, but there is not that there is not that en enough anti-Christian content in arabic so we want to also provide that as well anyways love you uh most of thank you, you maxime thank you amir thank you everyone thank you uh, i'll be happy to relate to more comments on facebook uh, if you want to comment on the video i might have time to answer that as well thank you armin for the opportunity yeah are we done or not yeah we're, we're done and i just want to thank you as well because i took so much of your time <laughs> no that's all right all right i thought we were just in the middle and, no, and most mostly thank you to Beige and Christy for their oh, amazing yes. patience. Yes, okay. absolutely. All right, <laughs> great, great job tolerating all this, uh, yeah. uh, this okay. cascade and of, of anti-Semitic bullshit. Thank you, Didi, as well. All right, love you all. Bye.